Into a slot left. But inside, go! Oh, touchdown! Kansas City! Travis Kelsey! Sell out blitz. Trubisky trying to spin away. Going nowhere! Sack back at his own 45. Now. Dan Hampton, the Hall of Fame Bears defensive tackle who specialized in making opposing quarterbacks see long white tunnels of light with ghostly lost relatives saying, go back, it was just a sack. Ned O.P. Obradovich, the Bears legend who is picking off passes and grinding offensive linemen into powder while you are still wearing tough skins and drinking tang. Glenn Koz Kozlowski, the one-time Bears receiver who could catch a pass and a dive, then celebrate four rows up in the stands with the pretzel vendor. Mark Harmon, a confident, independent young man with skills in communication and teamwork. He's what? He's getting married. Don't forget that. This is the Chevy Hampton OB Show with Cause. Sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. On the station with the best Bears coverage, 720 WGN Radio. Uh, it doesn't get much uglier than it did tonight at Soldier Field. I'll always remember the Eddie Pinheiro 46-yard field goal. That was a moment uh, that, you know, hey, Hamp, they found a kicker. There we go, Pinheiro, 2020. Hey, well, just like, you know, like we said in the pregame, like we've said on um, pretty much every week, uh, nothing says, you know, happy holidays and Merry Christmas like an embarrassing kick in the head to close out the regular season with bookend Efforts by the mighty Chicago Bear offense under Matt Nagy and uh, Mitchell Trubisky with three points in the home opener and three points in the home closer. Again, no touchdown in home opener, no touchdown in the home game today. Bears pregame on the air on 720 WGN. The Bears, of course, playing for pride. The Kansas City Chiefs playing for seedings. They've already won the AFC West. Hamp and OB with Kaz. We are with you till 7 o'clock tonight in your pregame show. And then after the game, 10.30 until midnight. Hamp and OB with Kaz. Sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDrivesChicago.com. Our phone number is 312-981-7200. It's the final home game. Bears a six-point underdog. Got the public address announcer Jim Rebant is uh, retiring after the game tonight. He started all the way back in 79 when a young Dan Hampton was a rookie for the Chicago Bears. And, uh, yeah, there's uh, no Akeem Hicks tonight out with the elbow injury. No Taylor Gabriel, no Bobby Massey. Prince of Mukamara is questionable with a hamstring. Danny Trevathan. Gentlemen, the season, as far as the playoffs, of course, is over. But uh, you have an opportunity to play two teams that are going to the playoffs and perhaps get yourself some momentum going into the off season. I'm not seeing a lot of excitement right now from Hamp and Ob. Well, uh, yeah, come on, let's let's be real. And Ob and I have uh, you know said this from the start. This team had an opportunity to control its destiny, and now it's out the window because of a lot of different reasons. And tonight we'll probably see some of those reasons manifest themselves once again, but. At the end of the day, you know, and I, I, I kind of brought this up the other day with Steve Cochran, and I said, you know what, I was on some teams that were not in the playoffs, and we knew we weren't going to be in the playoffs, but you know what, it's almost like a hidden hand. You separate the players. You find out who really, really wants to play and represent the Chicago Bears. You know, you know, they're like knuckleheads, and they don't care if they're playing for the playoffs. They don't care if they're playing for Pro Bowl ballots and ballots. Or they, they want to beat somebody. They, they, they don't care if it's in the parking lot, in the dressing room, on the field. They don't care, OB. And hopefully, we'll see a team that shows up tonight and says, "Hey, Kansas City, you got all the bells and whistles, and everybody that loves uh, Patrick Mahomes and all that stuff." But guess what? We want credibility, and we're going to go out there and we're going to take it to you, and we're going to see if you can stand up to the monsters. Of the midway. Did the Eagles win? The, the Eagles, OB, are, are it's 10-6 in the third quarter right now. Philly's on top of the Cowboys. Yeah. Well, Dan, I, you know, I'm looking, <clears throat> coming from last year to this year, <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me, and seeing what went on from the last game against the Philadelphia Eagles here, and then what they did in the offseason, and then going through the season game after game after game. 
And the only thing that I see that just totally and completely jumps out at me is this is an inept coaching staff. I'm not going to put this on all the players. They're there to play, and we've got some pretty damn good football players, kids that give it give it their all. But they have not been put offensively and defensively in a position, and I mean especially offensively, to win a game. You had all last season to correct what you did in that loss to the Philadelphia Eagles in the playoff game at home. You had a chance to change the offense. You had a chance to move Trubisky out. You kept him in the pocket. We won 11 of the 12 games on defense. The only game offensively last year we won was against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when Tampa Bay played the nobody cover, nobody defense. It was our defense that took us. And our defense is still good enough to take us to the Super Bowl. And I believe they'll be good enough next year to take us to the Super Bowl. Trubisky has not progressed. And you know who really hasn't progressed and understands the situation of what's going on here? Our head coach, Matt Nagy. You watch the plays that this guy calls from game to game to game. You watch his plays, his calls that he makes in the red zone from the 20-yard line, 10-15, 5-yard line, 2-yard line. He doesn't know what he's doing. And these guys are out there fighting, giving everything they can, and that's what I see. Poor coaching, and that has put us beginning of the, at the, during the offseason, the beginning of the season, and to where we're at right now. Poor, poor coaching by Nagy and his staff. That's the way I feel about it. And in light of the, the last week's proceedings, I think it's obvious that we need to start uh, um, um, filing charges of obstruction of offense against Matt Nagy before <laughs> before the end of the year. Well, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna break it all apart. But you're exactly right, Ob. But oh, you please. know, looking at at this game, does he have a chance for a reprieve and to say, hey, who's okay, he? I'm talking about Matt Nagy and being able to. If you watched the game last night against the uh, between the Rams and the 49ers, the Rams' offense was very, very similar to the offense we need to be running. It was a lot of bootlegs and a lot of motion and all kinds of different stuff, letting the quarterback get out on the edge, make plays, and the Rams showed us the roadmap of what we should be and what we should become. Will we get a glimpse of that tonight? How many times did I say that? Last year, get him out of the pot, let bootleg him, move the pocket, make the kid active. Let's hear a soundbite, I think, that is along the lines of what you guys are talking about as far as Matt Nagy's been under the uh, the microscope a little bit more this season, so has the quarterback. This was Nagy talking about this earlier this week. He's growing, and he's learning. Um, he's gone through a lot. And, and we've gone through a lot. So I'm just uh, I'm very proud of the way he's handled himself throughout. Uh, I think he'll tell you uh, the words I've, the word I've been using is mentally callous. We've all been. But um, we, we know that we want to we want to continue to grow as fast as we can. And so um, we're, all, we're all trying to do that as best as we can. Mentally callous, the word he's using. You two have mentally, along with a bunch of other people in this town, you have mentally callous both the head coach and the quarterback. What do you think? And they they deserve it, you know. It, when when you start looking at the offensive picture, and again, the the great coaches they have a simple philosophy: find out what our guys can do, and then let them do it. And then you know what? It, 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 the indictment came, I think, in week uh, uh, nine or ten when we actually had some success running the ball, which has to be the foundation of what this offense needs to, you know, grow to. we got to be able to run the ball. And, we, hey, listen, running the ball forever and a day, and I know OB says it's a passing league, but you've got to be balanced. You can't just do one. You've got to have a certain, you know, ability to, to keep people honest. Well, the top five rushing teams thus far this year, they're all going to the playoffs. So it's still important. But at the end of the day, Matt Nagy refusing to build this offense in a structure that where we could use play action and bootlegs and, and make people respect what we could do on the ground. He never did that. And basically, 
It's been up for grabs, and here they come after the quarterback. Let, let, Obi, let's take a quick time out, or could come back with your thoughts on that. And uh, there, could it be coaching? Uh, well, <laughs> coaching is a, obviously – we'll keep on teeing that up. And – there is the elephant in the room that we haven't talked about yet, which is Patrick Mahomes versus Mitchell Trubisky tonight. That'll... We're going to hear a lot about that tonight. Y- yes, we are. And you know what? Justifiably so. Absolutely. That kid's the reigning MVP. Watch yep. our guy. Two-time Pro Bowl. Get him to hand out toys or something. Right. This week, Chicago's best dedicated to making your early mornings easier. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. Get ready for Chicago's best breakfast, Sunday night at 10 on WGN-TV. Uh, do we have a, a quick second here? Sure, Obi. I'm just going to say this. Just all week, I've heard this Maggie since the last since last week. We're on a roll. We're rolling. These last two games, we're rolling. Trubisky's this. He's that. He's getting better. He's doing this. He's doing that. Mike, you know what this guy reminds me of? He should be a ringleader in a traveling circus, a one a one ring circus with that top hat and a satin red shirt. A carnival get the barker hell out of this town. We'll hear from Trubisky coming on back here. Hampton will be till 7. Bears and Chiefs at Soldier Field. Post game tonight as well, 720 WGN. The comparisons are out there, and they're never going to stop. Um, kind of me, Pat, and, and, and uh, Deshaun are kind of all grouped together because we're in the same draft class, drafted in the first round and, um, and all that. But uh, there, there's no do-overs. We are where we are. Um, our careers are going in different paths, and, and they will for the rest of the time, and they're always going to be compared against each other. So it's just kind of just the nature of the beast. But um, I'm in competition with myself, just trying to be the best version of me, go out there and uh, win games for the Chicago Bears. And um, it's just something that I can't control. And uh, it is what it is, but um, pretty two two good guys uh, to be in, in comparison with, and um, just competing with, and hopefully we just uh, keep getting better and help the league. Keep yeah. getting better and help the league. Two guys that are good to be compared with. Who's the only one comparing him to Patrick Mahomes? Is Trubisky yeah. comparing himself to those two guys? Well, that's where that's the point where I think it's just kind of funny that he's missing. That's hysterical. You're, you're not actually being yeah. compared to them. Like they're not comparing Ryan Leaf to Peyton Manning. Manning. See what 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 he does not understand or comprehend is the fact that he was the first one taken. So implicitly, he's supposed to be not only the best, <laughs> but a hell of a lot better than he is. He must. I mean, again, you almost feel sorry for you for the kid because it's like he's su- suffering from some kind of a dementia where he thinks oh we're all we, you know we're all just you know we're all working to get hard uh, get better and working hard and and all the, those platitudes it, that means nothing this is his third season and the other two their accomplishments speak for themselves unfortunately this kid is still you know dealing in cycle battle and and, and, and unfortunately, we've said this. It's like he's been coddled, and he doesn't he doesn't have a, a, a true grasp on reality. Ob. Well, I'll tell you what. This kid Trubisky is. I, I I I from day one, I told you that that'll go down probably as the worst draft mistake in the history of the NFL draft. And 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 our our great general, general manager Pace, who who found this kid out. By the way, he didn't even bother. To interview Deshaun Watson. Never even went after him. Two-time Pro Bowler. Bears will see him next year. Bears and the Texans. Go ahead. Well, here's here's what Trubisky says about himself to this day. Now, he said, I'm still, he says, I'd, I'd say I'm developing. Obviously, it doesn't always show in the statistical categories, but I feel like I've earned, I've learned a lot throughout the season. I've gotten more comfortable in certain areas. I definitely have grown, I've definitely grown as a leader, liar. Being able to speak up, yeah, you got a big mouth. Getting closer with coach, yes, you do. You guys hug each other all day. And being on the same page, communicating, and being more involved in the game plan and the checks throughout the game. Puke. I, I Go ahead, Hamp. No, I, I, you know, again, I know a lot of, of the listeners, you know, they want to say we're a little bit hard on him. But, folks, this isn't uh, high school football or college football. This is – professional you are paid to be the best to be exemplary and to lead your team to wins and that equates into championships and uh, unfortunately this kid i don't think he gets it i i I swear i don't think he gets it let me well they're still talking about the coach says it he said i'm still developing 
You're 25 years old. This is the end of three seasons. What do you mean you're developing? How? In a passing game? In a running game? In your generalship as, as being a, the top quarterback here in Chicago? you got to be kidding me. And the frustration that I have, it's year after year after year. It's been 34 years. And for all you great fans out there, when the hell is enough enough and somebody start taking these people out? I'll tell you, it's an absolute joke. And as far as I see, this guy, Matt Nagy, let him and Trubisky get on a slow boat to China, please. Well, a couple things on that, because I, you know, I was looking back through history, and the Bears drafted a young man by the name of Dan Hampton in 1979. And then Otis Wilson came along, Keith Van Horn came along, they drafted McMahon four, oh, fourth overall in 82. And if he had stayed healthy, who knows what would have happened. But you look at the 83 draft, right? And the Bears had the 6th and the 18th pick. They took Jimbo Covert, who should be in the Hall of Fame, number 6 over. I think you agree with that, Hamp, don't you? Oh, yeah. And Willie Gall at 18. Well, that guy Dan Marino went 27th to the Dolphins that year. Now, Hamp, if you had played your career, no disrespect to Jim McMahon or whatever, but if you had played your career with, with Dan Marino, how many Super Bowls does that team win? Well, I mean, but again, this is all, you know, just it's what if. I, I You know, obviously, this being... The, the Christmas season, you know, I, I'm the king of re-gifting. I, I, I'm really bad about it. I don't want anything, and somebody gets, I, I'm bad about re-gifting. Don't you think it would be great if we could re-gift the draft <laughs> and say, okay, you know, you gave us to we're going we're, we're gonna to give him to you, and we're going to take Patrick Mahomes. Now, obviously, you can't do that. Now, at, at some point, you know, there's a lot of, what would you say, facets to this whole, you know, Trubisky-Nagy duo. Matt Nagy has done himself no favors this year. Last year, he was he was coach of the year. Think about that. A lot of it because of the defense and Vic Fangio in the hidden hand of leading the league with all those turnovers, creating easy scoring opportunities. But now, here you are in the light of day, and you're, you, you know, you're looking at this team, and you're saying, w- "What have we accomplished this season?" It, it, it essentially this has this not, you know, it has has not only been a wasted season, but here now the the frustration and futility, and a couple of your really stud players on defense, they're injured and they couldn't complete the year. How many more are going to start getting nicked up and hurt next year or the next year? You know, the window closes every year and that's what has been really the saga and the sad saga of this year is this was a perfect opportunity and you know what unfortunately Nagy and and so much of what they try to do in offense this year has squandered it 41st start tonight for Mitchell Trubisky career passer rating of 84.2 that's 25th in the NFL right now go ahead OB no I was just saying you know that you sit here and there, there's so many, so much negative stuff. I mean, it's 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 incredible here, and and when when you sit here and think, I'm going 12 and four. All right, we lost the playoff game to the Eagles, and by the way, I think the Eagles are winning. They might be back in the playoffs, but anyways, wouldn't you think of how poor we were offensively last year, of how poor we were. We couldn't convert on third downs. Do you remember that? We couldn't score touchdowns. Do you remember that? And what have we done this year? We come out. We don't score touchdowns. We don't convert on third down. I do believe we lead the league in three and outs. If not, we're damn close to it. And so what have we done to try to make our offense better with Mitch Trubisky at quarterback from last year to this year with a super defense that could take us to the Super Bowl? And what do you see, folks? What do you see? You see the same same damn stuff that you saw last year. And after these games, a loss after loss after loss. Now, yeah, we're getting there. Where he's got to be developing. I'm developing. We're all developing. I got his back. You got my back. Mitski's got it. I mean, I tell you what. It gets, it, it's enough is enough, okay? The coaches didn't take this offense. They had, let's call it step one last year. They never even got close to step two to win a Super Bowl this year. What you saw from week to week, 
It is what it is, folks. But, you know, think about this. It's all about winning games. Winning games. And we could go back and, you know, dredge up the loss to the Raiders, the loss to the Chargers, all those things. What about last week? All I heard all week, two things. How how deflated the team was after Cordell Patterson's horrible call on the punt return where he forced a fumble and the Bears got it, and yet we were called for a penalty a phantom penalty, which should have never been called. But the whole team kind of laid back and deflated. And and what do we do? We score one, one measly touchdown in that game. In two contests against our arch rival, the Green Bay Packers, in 120 minutes of NFL football, we score one touchdown. That is all you can say when you when you strip it away and you look at the bottom line. The bottom line is, have we done anything to get better? I don't think the answer is yes. Danny, that's all we did last year. We couldn't score touchdowns. Against the Eagles in a playoff, we never scored a touchdown. We opened up with Green Bay. What did we score? One touchdown or no touchdown? Zero. Zero touchdowns. That's been the problem, folks. We can't convert on third down, and we don't score touchdowns. Now, whose fault is it? Really, whose fault is it? Let's come on back with our guy, Glenn Kozlowski. Our phone number is 312-981-7200. Play a soundbite coming back here, too. Matt Nagy talking about the advantages that Patrick Mahomes had in Kansas City that he did not or was different Please, in Chicago. Give me a break. There we, we'll, we'll, play, we'll play that coming on back here. Are you serious? Yeah, we're going to talk about that, OB. So I got some good stuff for you today here. Quick timeout, 720 WGN. Being able to have that, that red shirt year and learn learn how to watch tape, you know, learn how to practice, learn how to draw plays up and learn, you know, things that maybe he didn't do as much of in, in college. Well, it's the same thing with, with any quarterback, let alone Mitch, you know. So, and then, um, you know, now I come in last year and you have to, everybody, so the coaches too have to learn this, this offense. You know, this offense isn't in place for all these years. You got to learn how to practice, all that stuff. So there's a, a Every story is different. Every timeline is different. And for those two, it, en- it ends up being that way just because of the two situations they're in. There you go, Matt Nagy, talking about the timelines and basically saying that, hey, it was, it was a huge benefit for Patrick Mahomes to sit behind Alex Smith, be coached by Andy Reid, have Mike Kafka in the room, learn from a veteran, whereas this, this guy... Why, guy... Why, why doesn't he just indict himself a little bit more? <laughs> Think about this. What, Matt LaFleur up in Green Bay. Boy, they're really struggling, right? I mean, I'm just saying. It happens. Folks, the field is 53 yards wide, 100 yards long, 11 guys on each side. Offense is offense. And you know what? Okay, the system, blah, blah, blah. Well, shame on him for not playing this damn kid in the preseason, giving him at least a fighting chance. It's seeing what real-time adjustments have to be, you know, accomplished. I, you know, again, every – but, see, we, here we are just back carping and, and picking. But, you know, I, well, we don't like excuses. What else are you going to say? What else exactly. are you going to do? But we, nobody likes the excuses. The greatest coach. We got the greatest quarterback. Right, they're so far off the charts, it's unbelievable. It, it, and here's Nagy again with his excuses. It's excuse after excuse after excuse. Well, he's, he's saying that, hey, just give us a little bit more time. Let's bring in the Cos man, Glenn Kozlowski, on his own show. Hamp will be in Cos with you till 7 o'clock tonight, our pregame, and then after the game tonight at 10.30 till midnight. Kazi, what do you think of that soundbite from uh, Matt Nagy, who is obviously very, very close friends with the guy you know well and Andy Reid? Yeah, he is. And, you know, you look at this game, you say, okay, well, can't, uh, you know, Andy's maybe going to throw a little sugar to his uh, guy because he's a loyal coach. He's a really smart coach, too. But it's not going to happen. They, they have to have the number three spot or else it gets rough. So they're going to bring it tonight. Um, but, you know, Nagy is Nagy. Uh, I'm listening to a guy that makes up things. He, you know, he he gives great explanations, but I wish he would listen to himself once and then write it down because what he says is really smart, but he doesn't do it, guys. That's the problem. Here's a guy telling us, "Oh yeah, you got to do this, got to do that," but then he doesn't play the kid, doesn't play him in preseason, doesn't put him in these situations. So yeah, it, it you know, it's um, mind numbing. You watch them up in Green Bay, um, you're thinking, hey, this is not a great uh, Green Bay Packer team, but our quarterback 
is so inept at times that it's just embarrassing. And, he, you know, fourth down and six, he can't throw a, a simple hitch route. Think about that, right? I mean, the guy just turned around on the inside. It's a hitch route. He throws it too far to the, to the inside, and the guy misses it. I mean, this is the stuff that Dan's talking about, I'm talking about, Ed's talking about, and it drives us nuts, and there's nothing we can do about it. Well, We're there... stuck with this guy, and it's, it's stupid, but we are. What are we going to do? Last week, last season went by the wayside, you know, and, yep. and I assume everybody, when you go to play to this game at this level and you make a team, there's only one thing on your mind to win a world championship. And I'll tell you what, it, 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 it was what it was. It was 12 and four. We got in the playoffs, et cetera. We lost. My God, those coaches should have been at this tooth and nail. The day after that loss to Philadelphia here at home, they should have been tooth and nail trying to figure out how can we get better defensively because why you had your defensive coordinator leave. Offensively, you know we struggled on third down. Last year, just like this year, we probably again lead the league in three and outs. We don't convert on third down. That should have been worked on the day after from last year. Folks, you know what we did though, Ed. Instead, and Mark, I, I don't mean to jump in here and cut everybody off. What we did is we showed our kicker double doinking. Now, how does that motivate players when their kicker double doinks that we got rid of anyway? Who cares? We lost a game against Philadelphia because we couldn't score points. We couldn't score touchdowns. That's why we lost. I, I think Plain and simple. No other excuse for it, and that's why we lost. And and again, just to kind of you know reiterate what uh, Ob said was instead of them redoubling their efforts after seeing exactly. the the Achilles heel of this team being you know the play at, at quarterback and efficiency at that position, we don't you know we keep double talking and don't do anything to correct it now. Uh, all week we heard about oh Trubisky, you know he's turning the corner and he's he's got look at his numbers. He's I'm so developing. sick of yeah, I'm sick of these numbers. Think about this. Last week against Green Bay, it at, at halfway through the second quarter, our offense had generated all of 103 passing yards after two and a half quarters, and we had scored three points, and then. All of a sudden, Green Bay scores on back-to-back five-play drives. Thank you, defense. But at the end of the day, hey, they start playing a soft cover two, and he piles up a bunch of garbage yardage, 220 yards or something. And then, oh, we almost won at the end with that that circus, you know, at play. I, I'm just saying, they, it's like they're delusional. They weren't going to win. They still had to convert the two-point conversion to tie. But the point is, so give me they, a break. They, it's such they, a joke. What they, You're right, Dan. What, what they think they right. are. And what they are able to achieve on a weekly is completely different in reality. So back to tonight. Cause you, your point about Andy Reid is very good, which is that he's, you know, he's a, he's an old sage. He knows what's up and he understands the dilemma of, of Matt Nagy. He has to win. They have to win they, tonight. They, they, they mean, absolutely the, the, have to. But here's the other. The, I, I guess the part about this equation is, you know, what is what is Nagy going to do? You know, we always talk about these. You know, you know the mentor and the disciple and and this and that. I, I'm just saying tonight is a chance for this team to go out and say, yeah, you know what. We, we did a victory lap when we didn't have a right to. We weren't prepared. And you know what? That's, it blew back in our face. And we all are, 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 you know, not only sad about it, but embarrassed. But will they go out tonight and do the things they have to do to beat a, a, a quality NFL football team? I don't know. I think all these excuses are leading up to them just saying, hey, you know, oh, uh, Mahomes and Andy Reid, they had a big head start. So, they, you know, they, they oh, have yeah, a right to be more proficient. He's than played more games in the NFL than those two guys have. Trubisky has played it. more games in the NFL. And I'm going to go back again to what I just said because I think it's damn important. When they finished last year, like, this coaching staff didn't know what the problem was, and they, in meetings, et cetera, et cetera, had all the time in the world to figure it out, bring these kids in, install new plays offensively, new theories on how to attack offensively, 
and you had the exhibition season to put, to implement it, to make it work, and you never did it. You sent these kids out unprepared. And I, and I just said up, those Ed. words, and I'll say them again. You sent them out unprepared to start the 2019 season, Aggie. And whose fault is it? Pal, it's yours and your coaches, buddy. Yeah, 100%, because not only did they set him up, but they blamed it on the kicker that was no longer there. I mean, showing that, you know, double doink over and over again, what do you accomplish by that? Well, hey, guys, score more than seven points in a game. Maybe you can win on offense, Glenn, right? It's just so stupid. This Nagy's a double talker. You know what? He, he talks out of both sides of his mouth. You know, it's this, I can do this, he's can do that, we're on a roll, it's this, it's that. Ah, Jesus. Well, well you, you know, in the last ten... Everything's going to be great. Yeah. But he can't make a fourth down throw on fourth and six on basically a hitch route where the guy sits down on the inside and you just hit him right in his damn chest. You hit him in his chest, he's going to catch the ball. Even if he doesn't want to, he catches the ball. Right? Absolutely. And I'm talking about Green Bay last week early. I believe it was the second quarter, or maybe at the end of the first quarter where we went for it on fourth and six. I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? How I can make that throw, and I'm I'm old, and I could barely throw the ball more than eight yards, but I could throw that pass. It wasn't hard. I think it's interesting when you're talking about the kicking part of it, Kaz. It's not just that they play the double doink. They brought in 7,000 kickers. They had, they had a million different tryouts. They made it bigger than it was. I, I, I do think there's something to that. They were, they were delusional. They were kidding themselves about it. Like, if we just had the kicker, we would have, we would have been in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you weren't, there's no ch- guarantee you were going down to New Orleans, you're going to win on the road and get to the Super Bowl. Come, come on, man. That, that's, it's ridiculous. Well, and, and you only scored seven points on offense. And as much as it pains me to admit this, Ed was screaming about it last year, Dan. And you and I kind of soft, we kind of soft shelled it a little bit, saying, well, you know, they still had a, you know, they still were in position to win. But the truth is, you score seven points on offense, you don't deserve to go to the Super Bowl. That's how it works. It's well, pretty simple. And I think it's fair to say, ever since uh, Nagy has been uh, removed from the Kansas City equation, they flourished. Okay? <laughs> say what you will. What, has our defense flourished without Vic Fangio? I'm just saying, things like this, they matter. But regardless, we are what we are with who we have coaching and playing. Here's the one thing. In the 10 years of this decade, 2010 through this year, We've had four different head coaches. And you know what? Not one of them, not one of them had a clue about how to develop an NFL prolific offense. And, you know, I guess it's a that lot is harder. true. Than, yeah, think about it. You know, no, it we, we know what Lovey was, which true. was, you know, with yeah. Jay Cutler. But think, hey, it's not like we are without armaments. Hey, Alvin Robinson is, is, is going over a thousand yards for the first, uh, player in what? You know, six, seven years since Alshon every did it back in the Every team would take him right now. Yeah, He's he can play for one on every team other than New Orleans, yeah. probably. And, and you know what? It, 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 and Miller has flashed different things. But you know what? This this lack of rhythm and rhyme has 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 basically played against not only the team, but it's it's really hurt this kid at quarterback. Real quickly here. This, these last two games, Glenn, these last two games, one at home here tonight and the one up in Minnesota, we've never played big boy football. We've never stretched the field. When we got into the red zone, we've never gone to try to score a touchdown, to throw the ball into the end zone. Nagy, you've got two games to let this kid go. Let this offense go. Go down the field. Move him out of the pocket. And for God's sakes, try to win a game. Quick time, Akazi, you sticking around or we can talk to you in the post game? What's that? Are you sticking around or are you going to talk to you in the post game? Whatever you guys want. I'm here at least till the top of the hour. All right, hang on, my friend. Let's come on back with Kaz. And I'm going to, I, I got a little bit more with Nagy and, and Andy Reid, which, uh, you guys had a hell of a run here in Kansas City trying to win a Super Bowl this year. They nearly did it last year, albeit if they had gotten a coin flip against the Patriots, maybe they would have taken them down. I've you know? heard from a couple of people that right now, right now, the, the Chiefs are on the move. 
They could be your secret pick for the Super Bowl champ. Coming on back here, 720 WGN. Yeah, he's just a calming presence. I mean, he's somebody that I that I trust, um, you know, as a, as a friend, as a mentor. Uh, the amount of trust that I have for him and the experience, the life experiences and the coaching experiences that he's been through. And then the experiences that we've been through together for so many years, he's he's really he's taught me to to be who I am as a coach, and taught me to to be myself as a as a human being. And so, when those times arise where you need a little bit of advice for somebody that's been through something, he's the guy I go to, and um, he's been phenomenal through that stretch where we were having a difficult. You guys know that I told you that. So I just appreciate that more than anything, and and uh, he's one of my favorite people in the world. That's a, that's Matt Nagy talking about Andy Reid, who got him into to the NFL 2008, hired as an intern with the Philadelphia Eagles. You think about Andy Reid, you know, the coaching tree is endless, and of course Matt Nagy's in there as well, but quarterbacks that he's coached, Hamp, 22 seasons, he had Brett Favre in his prime, he had Donovan McNabb, he had Michael Vick, he had uh, Alex Smith, he had Patrick Mahomes, There's, he's doing something right over there. And essentially, all of those names would not have been names if they were not developed correctly and allowed to do. Michael Vick can't play the game that, like Brett Favre did. Right. And Alex Smith can't do what Michael Vick does. But all of them were able to flourish because of being smart and creative and allowing them to use their – you know, he, you know all this spouting, oh, be you, be you. Let the damn kid be who he is. He's not going to be Peyton Manning in the pocket. And again, we talked, I, I brought this up, watching that Ram offense last night, and in and, and so many ways, it just made me mad that we're, we're paying these guys, these offensive coordinator and quarterback coaches and all these offensive line, all, millions and millions and millions of dollars, and we have this r- r- offense of without rhyme, reason, our, our results on a weekly basis, and... You know, keep calling Andy Reid because if you think he's going to give you the answer, obviously he's not. It's been two years. You haven't got it yet. <laughs> Kazi, what, what, what's your thoughts on you – know, we mentioned it before. You you know Andy well. You're here in – He's Matt- one of my dearest friends. I've right. known him since I was a kid. You know, in uh, freshman year in college, he failed me in Spanish. You know, he taught me a lesson by failing me. But point of it is, look, he's he is a great – coach. He's one of the top four coaches in the NFL right now. He just is as a head coach. But that doesn't mean that his assistants are going to be great. Um, Most of them have gone on and have done really well. But, you know, Matt Nagy, I'm telling you, if you think about the whole thing with him, Andy didn't give up control of the offense until, what, week 15, 14 of the year before you know, we hired Matt Nagy. So, Dan and Ed, think about that. Here's the guy. He's really smart. He, he's one of the best coaches. He's going to know how to do things. He didn't give up control until the end of the year. What does it tell you about this guy? Well, and essentially right? it, it blew up in his face <laughs> because they had a 20-point lead at halftime in a playoff game and didn't score another point and lost to the Tennessee Titans. So Three first his, downs, his, his, and they win the game, yeah, basically. Yeah. Three first downs, right? Yeah, and 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 again, you know, this is two years ago now where we're regurgitating it. And I, I know we, we, we need to talk a little bit more focused about tonight's game. But it's hard, especially when you start bringing in, you know, this equation of Andy Reid and now his reigning MVP quarterback, and we look what Nagy – and Trubisky can't even get on the same stage with. Look at the game tonight and the game next week, okay, which I just alluded to about five minutes ago. Let me tell you something. You you haven't done it. You didn't do it last year. You haven't done it all year since you've been here, Nagy. All right? Let's see what this kid has got. Let's see if he can throw the ball 40, 50 yards down the field to a deep post pattern, a skinny post, a hitch and go, a fly pattern. Let's attack downfield. What the hell do we have to lose? We have nothing to lose. Open up that offense, move that quarterback out of there, and go after him. Why? This is what we have to do because our defense is going to be there. I don't know what – they'll never play a real bad game, but they're there week after week after week. What the problem has been the offense. And again, I'll say it again one more time. Two games left, Aggie. Let that kid go. 
Get the hell out of his way. Open the field up. Go down the field and try to score a touchdown. And he can't do it, though. The sad part is when we have seen him throw it long, unfortunately, it's, it is his worst throw. I mean, he throws it out of bounds half the time. He, he doesn't even give his receiver a chance to cast a damn thing. So it's hard to you – know, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying, Ed, and you're right. It, it, it's – we, well, we've got the to know. Tough part is the tough part is you're right. We gotta allow. You gotta find to, out. Can he do this, out. Glenn, he on a consistent? Can, he, can right. he do and, this? And my guess is he can't. But at least let's find it out. We got two weeks. Throw the ball downfield. Let's try to attack downfield and see what happens. That's I mean, what I'm, That's it. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see what the kids got. Let and, and if he throws an interception in the first quarter, don't worry about it. Keep yeah, attacking. Throw it again. Keep, Keep attacking. It. And let's see, in two games, is he qualified? Can he do it? Because what's seven and nine or nine and seven? Does anybody really care? And let's call it what it is. If Minnesota beats Green Bay on Monday night, they are gonna be they're gonna be going crazy and attacking the Bears. If they lose to Green Bay, it doesn't matter. They're going to the playoffs, and they're going to rest all their starters. I mean, let's just call it what it is. So you have two games where you really have a chance, really one game for sure, where you're going to get a good effort from Kansas City because they want to hang on to the number three seed because they did lose to the Texans. So they have to win this and stay one game ahead. It's important for them. All right, and you know what? And I guess, you know, the uh... – the the big hidden question here is at what point does does this marriage of Nagy Trubisky start to fracture? And we thought you know a couple of weeks you know after uh, the Green Bay game when Trubisky came out and said I I should have been out of the pocket more and you know, we should have called more plays for me out of the box. So I think we're starting to see it. But at some point, self preservation will take over and Nagy will start realizing. And and think about this, Trubisky. You know, he has some great throws, and then it's followed by really bad decisions and flat-out misses. And at some point, the coach knows this, and he can't expose that to the rest of the world. Some, maybe that's why we don't see this on a regular, consistent we need basis. To, though, but at some right? point, we're going to have to see it one way or the other. Kazi, we'll talk to you after the game, my friend. You got it, guys. And I'm sorry, we got everybody fired up. I mean, I want the Bears to win. Uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. But it's so frustrating because we have a defense that could carry us all the way to the Super Bowl. And we have no offense. And that's what we brought this guy in to do. And that's what Ed, myself, and Dan are frustrated with. Talk to you right? after the game, my friend. All right, all right see you guys. Okay, Bye. there's the Cosman. Adam Ho coming up at the 6 o'clock hour here till 7, 720 WGN. Never one person, it's never one play, not placing blame. Um, just felt like it, overall it wasn't enough. So uh, we, we just got to continue to pull together. I mean, you guys are going to continue to write us off, and um, but we got to go back to work this week, continue to pull together as a team, um, just continue to work hard and, and, and be a family like we are. So uh, tough one. That's how it is. It doesn't matter. It, that's a loss. So you feel that, but you try to learn from it, get better, and keep growing as a team. That was Mitchell Trubisky after the loss last week against the Packers when it was officially all over. You know, he said in there, Hamp, you guys are going to write us off. Um, no, they wrote themselves off who's, by their lack of, of production. You're off. Yeah, you're, you're, you're out. <laughs> you're done. You're through. Hey, delusional, uh, uh, you know, young man. You need to get a reality check. And you know what? Buddy Ryan used to say, hey, trying hard doesn't get it done. You got to win. It's a win-lose proposition. Trying hard, yeah, you're expected. You're paid to play. That That's the bare minimum of expectations. By the way, before we get going here, we're going to get to a call. I just want to say something. And, folks, uh, you know, I just want to say this. Uh our, our dear friend, Steve Cochran, no longer going to be with us here on WGN Radio, and he's been a friend a long time. And I want you to just know this. He's, he's a great guy. He's a Chevy man, a Chevy spokesman. He's an icon, a, a golfer, a prankster joker, stand-up comedian. He's, he's jack of all trades, and I've, I've really enjoyed my time with him. You know, I've got up early, OB, the last six years to do his Monday and Friday morning radio segments. And it's not fun getting up after, you know, we're going to get home after 1 o'clock tonight. But, hey, I did it because 
I really enjoyed our time together, and I just wish him the best. And uh, and he'll 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 do fine. But anyway, we just you know I wanted to say we love Steve Cochran. Well, I'm sure he'll land on his feet somewhere, Dan. You know, Mary just a. Uh... Merry Christmas and a healthy 20. My first you ever. Know, good luck. Godspeed, my friend. My first ever internship was with Steve at, uh, up the dial a little bit. And he sent me out to uh, find Carol Marine on her last night at Channel 5. And so I was, I was down on Lower Wacker. I'm a young kid. I think, like, you know, I'm, I don't know where I'm at. This doesn't How long look like did the it be- take you to get fired? <laughs> Not that long, it'll be. <laughs> Not that long at all. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm filling in for Dave on the morning show, so I work with Steve a ton, too, and I, I share the sentiments you just said, Ham. All right. But let's, on we go. Onward. It's, hey, this we got to call him. This is the business of radio. This is, uh, it, uh, yeah. All right, moving along. Mike on the north side, welcome to 720 WGN. Ham, OB, and Cos with you till 7 o'clock on our pregame show. Go ahead, Mike. You've been waiting patiently. All right, thanks for taking my call. I'm going to try to explain the logic behind Coach Nagy. It's going to be hard. It's not right, but maybe this will save you some agita. Get the paddles ready for OB because he's going to go nuts. But this is the problem with Coach Nagy and his quarterback, St. Mitchell, the patron saint of utter failure. This year he rested him in the preseason, and he saved him for the season. Now he talks about progression. I'm afraid next year he's going to rest him in the whole season and save him for the playoffs. And the following year, he's not even going to play the playoffs. They're going to rest him for sainthood. But this is what we're stuck with. Mike, you waited an hour to say that. Props for the creativity. And we're going to give you, because of your patience, a $50 gift card to Bartolini's Restaurant. Family-owned and operated with the best Italian cuisine in Chicagoland. They ship to 50 states. Home of the Bartolini 10-pound meatball sandwich challenge. Their newly renovated bar and dining room offers 24 beers on tap, including many local brews. Visit Bartolini's.com. I know, OB, you're ready for dinner tonight. No, you know what? And what Mike was talking about, and and it's since Nagy's been here, and it's and it's and it happened all last year during the offseason, training camp, exhibition, and now we're going into the, what, 15th game here? And again, what is it? We don't convert on third downs, and we don't score touchdowns. It's the same thing week after week after week. And now, and you think we don't have a problem? We've got a huge problem, gentlemen, and it's with this coaching staff. I'll give the players all the credit in the world. They're out there fighting, but my God, they've got to be led. They've got to be put in position. You got to take advantage of what a defense gives you and how to attack a field. 53 yards wide, 100 yards long. You got to attack. You got to go after people. We don't do it. And then you wonder why we are where we are? You wonder why we can't beat the good teams? That's well, the reason why. Yeah. And, you know, our criticism, obviously, is the majority is on the offensive side, but you got to throw the defense in there a little bit. Come on. That game last week. And again, it, it, it was, a, a, I mean, you're hanging by your fingernails. And. We go in. Uh, what were we down? Seven three at the half, and um, the uh, the Packers come out. They get the ball and they go five plays for a touchdown. And then on the on the next possession, they go five plays for a touchdown. And at some point, you've got to say, okay, number one, why can we not make certain adjustments? But more importantly, and I know you're saying the players are playing hard, but I, I got to tell you, Mukamara diving in front of the uh, the uh, the running back and then not even trying to wrap up, uh, you know, the the, the 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 guy with the the ball carrier. I mean, and and Eddie Jackson whiffing on on uh, certain plays. I, I there's you know this defense and everybody wants to and it's it's not sour grapes. You know, last year we tipped our cap and said they were they were terrific. This year, I don't see it. I don't see it. And you know what? It, you know, from top to bottom, now it's starting to all kind of decay. A lot of the things we did well last year, rushing the passer, turnovers, uh, tackling, all that, it's it's starting to wane. And you know what? It all emanates from this, this one precept, which is, hey, there's 53 guys on the team. Everybody gets treated the same. Oh, except the coach coddles the quarterback. It's just a matter of time till everybody else says, I don't need to put my head in there and wrap him up because, hey, Trubisky gets to throw the ball on the ground and everybody says it's okay. You know, the, the, the thing that's really bothersome about this is, is what we gave up to get, what uh, Pace gave up to get this kid Trubisky in here. And, and again, you've had three years of it with this kid, okay? 
I don't see the improvement. Nothing in there shows me that he could dominate as a quarterback like an Aaron Rodgers. When you go play Green Bay, when you play New England, Tom Brady, those quarterbacks can take you out in a New York second. They can take you out, turn a game on a dime. We cannot do that. They can. So anytime you go up to Green Bay and you're playing even with them, just remember the fact that that kid could take you out and any second on any play, same thing with Tom Brady. That's why those people are where they are. Those teams are where they are, capable and quality coaching, and we don't have it. And I don't care if people like it, dislike it, or whatever. I'm telling you, it's right in front of you, folks. Tom Brady, free agent at the end of the year. Maybe the Bears will make a call. Make Sundays your official night to tour the city. Watch Chicago's Best at 10 p.m. Stick around. For the latest in shopping, entertainment, and events on Sea Chicago at 10.30 p.m. on WGN-TV. Adam Hoag's coming up at the bottom of the hour. Uh, and the running back last week, Hamp, I, I, I'm not sure if it was Aaron Jones or Jamal Williams. Either way, the Packers rushed for 100 yards last week. They ha- they were not uh, the, the Bears' defense. But they were busted. There, there was missed tackles and enabled the Packers to go in five plays, 63 yards for a yeah. touchdown. Yeah. That's so inexcusable. We have Montgomery, what, from Iowa State? Yeah. We draft, move up to get him in the third round, and we get rid of Jordan. What do we get for Jordan Howard? Six-round draft pick. A six-round draft pick. Wouldn't you rather have Jordan here? And with Montgomery, a one-two punch in the backfield. Makes sense. All right. I know he, I know Jordan has a tough time catching the ball. But I'll tell you what, he's a hell of a better runner than Montgomery is. 312-981-7200, by the way, if you want to jump on in there. Hampton will be with Costel 7 on 720 WGN. Individual comparisons, um, whether it's me and Coach or it's the quarterbacks or it's their D linemen and our D linemen, their, their outside, you know, rush end and ours and safety versus all that stuff. Um that's that's trouble. So for uh, that, that's how I handle it. We don't even talk about it. Matt Nagy, we don't even talk about comparisons. Dan have to be. You know why? Because it wouldn't really look good if we were talking about comparisons right there. By the way, uh, news coming out of Soldier Field. Prince of Murkamara will play tonight. He's active. LaShawn McCoy is not for the Chiefs. Adam Hogue will be joining us from Soldier Field uh, coming up at the bottom of the hour. Uh, you know, and and quite honestly. Uh, as a coach, you can't say, "Wow, I sure would like to," you know, have that quarterback. Well, it's it's human nature, you know. You drive down the street and you see a guy swing by in a Ferrari or something. Wow, I'd like. To. How can he just get up there and say that he doesn't make comparisons? You know, as a player, and I've told this story a number of times, but it's so true. If if you do not try to measure up with your opposition, then what are you doing? I mean, it's it's the basis of competition. You know, how many times have we always heard in a boxing match the tail of the tape? You know, this guy's two hundred thirty-two pounds and six one, and you know, it's human nature, and that's what you you aspire to be the guy, to be the champion, to be the reigning MVP, to be the leading rushing team in football, to be whatever. To have them lead the league in sacks, all those things, you know, how how, how full of nonsense is is that statement? And I'll, I'll tell you this: every every Monday morning we would come in and we we would look at a defensive chart on the wall that ranked all the defenses in the NFL. And you know what? For a long time we were at the very top. And you know what? It was a source of pride, motivation, inspiration, all those things. What if we never even thought about that? Oh, well, we won. It doesn't matter how we play. No, it does matter. And for this not, this this knucklehead to say that just tells you they're not on the right path. And they're it, not. It, it, you would. It's not that you want them to sit there and be like, hey, okay, Patrick Mahomes has passed for eight thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven yards. That's what it's what it is coming in tonight's game. Seventy-three touchdowns, only seventeen interceptions, twenty-nine games, and then you want to list Trubisky eight thousand one ninety in more games. 39 of them, uh, that's 10 more games, 48 touchdowns, 29 interceptions. These well, are the stats. But all those numbers, guys, Pat, you know, and, and I, the announcer said something today, and a, a running back uh, fumbled the ball, and he goes, oh, but he was having some nice numbers. You know, with this fantasy football nonsense, everybody's into numbers. No, it's about efficiency and, and, and scoring points on offense and winning 
And you know what? The most the most impressive thing about Drew Brees on Monday night setting the all time touchdown record was they got into the red zone a number of times, and they're playing a crummy opponent, the Colts, and they were going to win. Instead of just saying, "Hey, we're going to go after the record for Drew Brees," they didn't. They gave it to Kamara a number of times down there, letting him try to run the ball into the end zone. They stayed balanced. They stayed within the team, the the framework of the team, and you know. It's almost like everybody's worried about numbers and this and that. The comparisons are what they are. Patrick Mahomes is a true NFL star. Anybody that thinks Trubisky can be that, you know, I don't know what to think about that. But like I said, you know, and the comparisons are, okay, the coach doesn't have to say, he said, hey, we're all trying to be great. Patrick Mahomes is great, and this kid's great. Don't say, oh, we don't compare. That's that's asinine. We would love to make Mitchell Trubisky an MVP like Patrick Mahomes. That is our goal for Mitchell Trubisky. That is still our goal. We, we would love to make him. No, he's got to do it himself. Fair enough. Fair enough. We would like to help him. Let, 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 me, let me work the language. It's amazing what Patrick Mahomes has done. Youngest MVP at 23 since Marino did it in 1984 at that age. We would we we are setting our goals high and 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 yes, uh, this is something that we are striving for. It'll be totally fine, and they're going to be compared tonight. We know that's the case. Oh, we're going to get sick of it by the halftime. But yeah. but re- regardless, the point is, forever and a day they will be compared. And Trubisky was drafted first, second overall. Way ahead of him and, and, and Watson. And that right there is, that's the crux of the whole thing. In apples to apples world, he should be a lot better than he is. What I'd quickly like to see, open up that offense again. I've said it about four <laughs> times, and I'd say it again. Nagy, please get out of the way, and let's try to go after, let's try to go after the Chiefs. And let's try to score points and throw that damn football down the field. And let's look at those numbers after the game. Let's have a comparison and see how we look after we open it up. That would be fun to do. We'll do it on the postgame show, I promise you. Win in uh, Madison. Welcome to 720 WGN. What's up, Win? Win. When are you there? Paging 321. Win is not there. Win, when we, we had you, my friend. We were, we were giving you the opportunity. 312 981. 7,200, that is the phone number uh, if you do want to get in here. Adam Hogue is coming on up. And again, we will be on after the uh, the football game tonight at 720. I just got popcorn oh, on my throat, OB. Oh, yeah, well, absolutely. You know what? And I just, you know, could the Bears win? You know, uh, actually, anybody could win at any time. I've seen, you know, great teams that have lost one or two games uh, play against teams that have won one or two games, and and guess what? They beat you. It happens. But it, again, I just it, did it, you it, just pick the Bears to win? Did I just hear that? I think you just did. Uh, if here, if they unleash this kid, get him out of the pocket and play it like you're supposed to play. I don't know of how to say it, folks. I see it. I view the game. I understand the game. I know what it takes to be a world champion, and and. You're, what they've been doing is holding this kid, holding him back, holding him back. Is it because they re- realize he's not an accurate passer and we can't even go there? And if, in fact, that is what it is, wow. Pace, <laughs> the general manager, if in case, if in fact that is the case, what a disaster, folks. Well, that part of it we have not teed up, which is, you know, you look at what, the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid has that the Bears don't have. You look at the tight end, elite, Travis Kelsey, one of the best in the games. You look at Tyreek Hill. I mean, Al, Al, they, you have... Go up and down in the league, and they all have tight ends. What team does Excuse me. Yes, we do. We have seven tight ends that were active. Seven. And if you put all seven together, you still wouldn't make a starter. You wouldn't, although... Well, see, and th- th- therein is, is the crux of the problem. You say, well, they've got this and they got that. Well, it's been two years now that Nagy has been here. If he doesn't know what he needs and he hasn't conveyed that to his best buddy, Ryan Pace, then, okay, there's a, there's a real big disconnect. Because you and I both know that, hey, for you to become great at anything, you've got to find the right ingredients. And if we don't have them, then who does that fall on? That's Ryan Pace. You wonder the reason why we're at where we're at? 
an integral part of an offense <laughs> the last several years because of the rules, whatever it gives you, is a tight end. You see all the major teams that are really good, and what they have, they have a pretty damn good tight end. Not seven people that can't play the position. And that's just what we got. We've got an offensive threat. We got wide outs. We've got running backs. We've got a quarterback. But we have one of the most important positions on an offense to strike, to go for a touchdown tight end. We don't have one on this team. Not one. And, and you know what? what really, the, the really sad part about it is with the accuracy deficiency of Trubisky, a tight end that has, you know, that can present himself. Is the easiest of all throws, right? And why wouldn't you want to give it? Yeah, again, so much of this is just it, it's head scratching. I wanted to ask you about Mitch's comment about not rolling out more run and draw screens, that sort of stuff. You said you hadn't heard about it. Yeah. Uh, have you talked to him about it since? Is there any zero? Nope. I, I really haven't. I haven't. So, am I? Should I? No. I mean, if he has those thoughts during a game, he tells them to you. Yes. Or Absolutely. We. Yes. I mean that. That's. Uh, that's, exactly. We're very, we're very, very open with each other. There you go. That was Matt Nagy being questioned by our guy Patrick Finley over the Sun Times. Hey, uh, yo, Mitch said after the game against the Packers that he wanted to get out of that pocket a little bit more. By the way, Ed Bradovich has been saying that on seven twenty WGN. Uh, yeah, I hadn't heard about that. That's what he asked him on Monday. Then he followed up later in the week. That was Wednesday. What did you see here? Here is Wise Crack remark. What you just said. Should I? Should I? You think that's not a a fire back? Well, at Finley, huh? You uh, can make book on it, my friend. Well, that's hey, let's get a little bit of fire here. I, you know, every time, the, but, 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 folks, let me let me just preface this. Yeah, we're not saying run a, a, a bootleg every play. You cannot do that. It's just a matter of time. Defenses are smart and active, and they will find. Them. But that dimension, think of it as as four wheels on a car, okay? And the screen and draw. Uh, you know, portion of your offense is, is one wheel. The deep throws is another wheel. The running game is a wheel. And then there's another one that it would be the bootleg and play action. And we're running right now with two, maybe at best three wheels at any one time. So we have to be more diversified and more balanced. But the one part of the quotient that Trubisky would excel in is the one we're not doing. That's what we're saying. Well, Does that the, make sense? Yeah. What, 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 what a, what a great play is. To the strong side, a sprint out to the strong side. Why strong side? Tight end designates it. So whoever the defensive end is called, or if the linebacker's in there, you have containment. So all you have to do is have that offensive tackle fire it out, stymie him, and chip block with the tight end, have the tight end release, and do a six-yard flare out. And when you got the sprint out, he'll be looking down the field or for the backside coming across if they don't. He's got the outlet right to the tight end. Why? Because he can get out and around the defensive end. Why? Because he chipped him, he held him in there, and the tackle would take care of him. It's a great play to have, folks. Well, let's bring in Adam Hogue, who loves this level of football conversation right here. Don't you, Adam Hogue? That, that, oh, I, I, <laughs> I, I do. I, I feel like Adam Hogue just got so excited right there. Uh, all right. <laughs> so... All right, we're, 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 we we played the, the Patrick Finley moment with, uh, with Matt Nagy. You had your own uh, questions this week as well, Adam Hogue. It, it seems like, though, that everything was kind of friendly between the, the media and the head coach this week. It wasn't too super contentious from what I could tell. That was. That, that answer was. Was it? Yeah. You did uh, right I don't know. Was. I, I think, you know, I think deep down uh, Nagy realizes that he needs to do some self-reflection this offseason to, to figure out how to come back uh, better next year, both uh, as a play caller and uh, not. A, I think it runs deeper. I think it runs to, to some of the things we've talked about where they're when they're scrambling midway through the season to try to find offensive identity, like they're, they were literally installing I-formation plays that weren't in the playbook back in, in July and August. So, you know, I, I think that the playbook needs to be condensed um, and stick to more of the stuff that you, you saw work this year and come back with more of that instead of this, you know, 7,000 play uh, book that's obviously not only the quarterback, but I think the offensive line, too, has struggled um, to, to operate consistently throughout the entire season. And I think that's when you go back to what Trubisky said last week at Lambeau Field after the game, 
you know, he was talking about those bootlegs and all that stuff that we've talked about all season, but more so in the context of his old line rather than just himself. And so I think that that's where Nagy understands that, that he, you know, this stuff needs to be fixed in the off season in these next few months when he's alone, when he's got, you know, his staff looking over the tape and figuring out what worked this season and what didn't. Bears reporter Adam Hogue out at Soldier Field right now. Uh, news tonight, Prince of Mukamara is going to play, and of course we all know that Akeem Hicks was ruled out yesterday. Adam, anything else breaking tonight? Uh, not, not, uh, not on the Bears' side. On the Chiefs' side, LaShawn McCoy is inactive, which was a little bit of a, a surprise, but Damian Williams is back. So I don't, know, I don't think that really matters all that much. When I'm interested in with Prince being active, how much does he actually play? Because, you know, that's the spot right now where Prince of Mugamaro not might not be back next season. And you have a young kid in Kevin Tolliver. I think you need to know what he can do. So, uh, you know, is that going to be – is that playing time tonight going to be split? Does Tolliver actually play and start? Uh, well, that, those are the things we have to wait until game time to, to really see. Because, honestly, I'd play the young kid just to see what he could do. How much do you expect Khalil Mack to play? Oh, I expect him to be full go. Okay. I think uh, I, I think in that you know unless um, unless my sort of theory I've brought up a few times this season that he might not be a hundred percent. Maybe they limit him a little bit. But um, no, you know, guys, I think they want to go out and win this one. I think they want to win this one for Matt Nagy against Andy Reid, and, and I think that there's guys on this team that that want to go out and and help their quarterback look good against Patrick Mahomes because they're not stupid. They know what everyone's saying out there, and it's all true and fair, but um, you know, I think they want to help Trubisky play well tonight against the guy that the Bears passed on. Hey, Adam, it, it, if what you just said is right and true, what you just said, how sad is that? <laughs> want to win this game against Patrick Mahomes, against Kansas City, this game. What about the other 15 games? That's the sad thing, Adam. Well, and and Adam, let me just throw this at you also. Now, we know, and again, uh, this has been pretty heavy, uh, you know, jump on Trubisky night here at WGN. And, you know, we we want him to do well, but unfortunately we're bracing for what is expected. Here's, Here's the one thing that I think you and I both know. Last year, after watching Mahomes light it up on a Sunday, we played the Rams that night. And I said it in the pregame. I said, let's hope that Trubisky doesn't go out and try to become little Mahomes and do it. And he almost did. And he threw three interceptions and he played miserably. So do you think after watching all these young quarterbacks light it up all weekend, yesterday, today, do you think we're going to see a little bit of that too? Well, I I just think that you're going to hopefully see the guy that's been building – some decent performances the last six weeks. You know, I'd say that four out of those six, I always like to put it like in these terms. So is he a quarterback you can win with or win because of? Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is a quarterback that they, the Kansas City Chiefs win because of. Mitch Trubisky has either been a guy that the Bears are able to win with or they're losing because of for most of his career. There's been a couple exceptions lately. I think – Four out of the last six weeks, he's been a win-with guy, but against the Lions and against the Cowboys in that two-week stretch, he was the guy that was actually lifting his teammates up and they were winning because of. And then it went back to the, you know, last week, and that was obviously not the case. So um, that's what I want to see. It just can he continue to build on this, 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 what he's done the last six weeks. I don't know that it needs to have anything to do with what other quarterbacks are doing around him or even what the guy across the field is doing uh, tonight. But, you know, everybody's human, and that is hard to ignore. You know, Adam, I, I understand and I hear what you're saying, and it's, and it's a positive thing that you're saying. But let's go back to who they played. They played the Detroit Lions. Detroit yep. Lions, who won three games. We played them twice. We played the New York Giants. That at the time won two games, and we played the Dallas Cowboys at home, which was a six and six team. So, and everybody wants to put all these great accolades of, of of all. Well, he's gotten better. It's all this. I don't think that happens against New England. I don't think that happens against this team. I don't think that really happens because I'll tell you what, to 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 put him 
like he's done some, led this team on some crusade of them getting better. The minute they got challenged, they failed again in Green Bay. So I, I don't buy it, Adam. I really don't. Yeah, and I think that's fair. I, I mean, I certainly won't dismiss the schedule. Um, you know, right. he, he didn't right. get the job done him. against the Rams, and he didn't get the job done against the Packers last week. I don't think he played horrible in those games like earlier in the year. But you got those are games you got to win. And, and obviously the Bears didn't do that. And so here's another one tonight against a good opponent. We're just going to have to see how he plays. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the the Chiefs' defense and specifically their pass rush. You know, last week, Trubisky was, you know, kind of clobbered in the pocket a, a number of times, got out, made it a, a couple of plays. But I think we're going to see again tonight, especially on the right side over there with Coward and uh, Cornelius Lucas, the, the Chiefs, they're, they've traditionally been one of those bend don't break defenses, but Steve Spagnuolo has really kind of got them playing better. They're 18th in the league now. Last year they were 29th, and they made it yeah. a play away from going to the Super Bowl. Do you think we're going to have uh, our hands full tonight with that Chiefs pass rush? I do. I mean, my problem with this game tonight is that I just don't expect the Bears off. <laughs> All this talk we've just had, I do not expect the Bears offense to really have much success tonight moving the football. I think they have too many issues on their side of the ball. The offensive line, I just just not good enough for me. They don't have a tight end. The other team has Travis Kelsey. Um, and I, you, exactly what you just said, Hamp, this Chiefs defense has been improving. I think they've only allowed 10 points per game over the last month or so. Uh, that's pretty good. I mean, that's better than what the Bears have been doing, actually. And the Bears have allowed the fewest points in the NFC this season. So uh, it's a tough matchup, and I just think the blueprint's out there right now on this offense, uh, and it goes back to even the OB, what you're saying. It, you know, it, To me, it doesn't fall all on Mitch because when they play better opponents, those better opponents have the blueprint on the entire scheme. And, and that goes back to week one with what the Packers uh, it, did to the Bears and did again last week against them. So I don't really care if the numbers show that the Bears should be able to run the football against the Chiefs. They were supposed to run the football last week against the Packers, too, and it just didn't happen. I don't think they're good enough up front. Adam, we'll talk to you after the game. And, by the way, we, uh, we're we going to save a sandwich from Bartolini's. They just arrived here, and we have a beautiful uh, dinner. So we're going to make you a plate, my friend. Are you in? Yeah, can I drive over there and watch with you? <laughs> We'd love for you to. Uh, $21.95, you can. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm in. <laughs> we'll see you after the game, Adam Hogue. All right, guys. Talk to you after the game. Adam Hogue out at Soldier Field. Bartolini's family-owned and operated the best Italian cuisine in Chicago and shipping to all 50 states. Bartolini's, B-A-R-T-O-L-I-N-I-S dot com you know for more. Danny, they, they got a lot of reporters in this town, sports reporters. I got to tell you what. Uh, give, uh, it a, since, give it up for since, Adam Hogue. Since, since being, being over here, I'm going to tell you what. I'm impressed with this kid. I'll tell you what. He does have knowledge. And he also has an understanding of the game and how it's to be played at this level. The kid's a pro. He's a true pro. He's great. I think the world of him. He does a wonderful job. That's uh, that's very nice of you to say, Obi. And, 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 and Adam and his family appreciate it. And, and you know, I like what he was saying. You know, tradi- you know, traditionally we break down games. Okay, this matchup, that matchup. But the uh, the one unit tonight that I'm most concerned about is the offensive line. And at some point, they're going to have to learn how to run block. They haven't done it yet. All right, coming on back here, we'll update you on the games of today, including a big one with Dallas and the Eagles that's gone final. And we'll give you our predictions for tonight. Bears and the Chiefs coming up from Soldier Field. We're with you till 7 on 720 WGN. He grew up in a sports background with his dad being a Major League Baseball player. So we had that. He came into a, to a place in Kansas City, where he he had a, a good nucleus there of players that that had that knew the offense pretty well, so he was in, in a lot of different areas. So, um, and then he's a hard worker. That was Matt Nagy talking about Patrick Mahomes and the situation he came into in KC, which, uh, if you think about it, the situation that Mitchell Trubisky, which he's not saying, he came into a situation here where the Bears had paid Mike Glennon a ton of money. He was expecting to play. Then he proved that he couldn't play. You had a coach that was on his way out in John Fox. That wasn't ideal. And then I came in. So, hey, maybe you want to take a little bit off the plate as far as the criticism on Mitchell Trubisky, considering where 
what Mahomes had versus compared to what Trubisky has had, which is why he's trying to build some optimism that, hey, as he gets more time, and I know it'll be your night. This guy needs to sell timeshares. Let me tell you this. <laughs> How much do you think Mahomes would like to play with a defense like he had? Here? We got you think here. Mahomes would play and an offensive game plan from week to week that Nagy puts out there? He'd burn it. Answer that question. You think Mahomes would? He'd stand for that? So you're saying that Patrick Mahomes, if Nagy gave him the, the, the play calls, he'd be like, we're not doing this, and we would challenge if him? If we switch pl- game plans tonight. Okay. You think Patrick Third Mahomes po- is going to take Nagy's game plan? Mark. Uh, with well, it's all the coach, those... though. What's he going to do? Oh, oh, Jesus. You know, look. The, the, the... What do you mean? What, what Johnny Unitas did? What Bart Steyer did? Just improv- Okay. And what Aaron Rodgers just did? Coach, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe. What the hell are you talking about? No, and, and, and again, I hate to say it, but we almost expected this. But I remember after, I think it was week eight, I was listening to Dave Ragone, the quarterback coach, and they were talking about this very thing. Patrick Mahomes had done something pretty spectacular, and and uh, they asked you know, Ragone, uh, "What do you think, you know, about you know the the two trajectories of Trubisky versus Mahomes?" Blah, blah blah. Oh, we we. It's almost like, you know, they they're ostriches and stick their head in the ground. They don't want to look around. No, 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 no. We don't we don't know what's going on. We don't we don't compare people. We don't think about that. I mean, the nonsense that they try to you know, the feed. The, the bear fans, and they, the bad part is, they treat us like we're imbeciles. And you know what? We all, we all, especially with this, you know, stat pro- proliferation of the uh, fantasy world, everybody knows what every little kids know all about these stats. And you're going to tell me they don't, they don't pay any attention? It's, it's ridiculous. The the point that I'm trying to get to is if if you go all the way up to the top. And you look at the organization as a whole, and you're bringing in a quarterback, and you want to set him up for success. Did the Bear? And I'm not saying he would have been a great quarterback, to Ob. But did the Bears set Mitchell Trubisky, who played 13 games of college football, up for success, bringing him in here with a coach who was a lame duck, putting him behind Mike Glennon, who couldn't play, rushing him on the field because your free agent signing was awful? That's on Ryan Pace. All of it was not in the best interest of developing a quarterback. They did a terrible job with him. That's, that, that was wonderful what you just said. But the fact of the matter is, if Trubisky to be drafted in that position, those words mean nothing. Because what takes over when he comes into training camp, he comes in here with all those great credentials, and if he is, he can back that up, then he does it. So you mean, like, did the words hurt him and take him back and all that? No, they didn't. But, I mean, it's, it's great what you just said in explaining that, but that meant nothing to Trubisky. That would mean nothing to Patrick Mahomes. They let the, their their work do their talking for him. Which is, by the way, another point that you just made there, Obi. You should know what you were like putting him into. Should we take the guy who's got the least amount of experience and hope that we're going to uh, we're gonna make him accomplish, or should we take the guy Mark, who, I've who's, said this, who's I've ready said this to play? Times. It's called no, a two blunder. Years. It's a blunder. Just yeah. call it what it is. It's a blunder. It's a reach. They again, Ryan Pace thinking he was going to draft a six-seven tight end from nowhere and make him into the next Gronk, and that kid's basically got a you know foot out the door. What is his name? Adam, Adam Shaheen. Adam Shaheen. Ashland again, College. And here he is taking a, an offensive coordinator that just blew a playoff game, and yet we're not going to look at that. We're going to project him because I think I'm smarter than everybody else, and this is the guy that I think I can project to become the next great coach. That's right. the other thing with Nagy. He thinks he can outsmart, outsmart any other coach in the National Football League. With his trick plays, with all his his the goofy things that he does, he thinks he's a genius. He really does. There was a lot of times this year where he's like, well, we can't do that because they knew that we were going to be running. Hey, man, if it's successful, you don't, have to, you don't have to prove everybody how smart you are with some magical thing. Let me but- tell you, when you go back in a day like Jim Brown, when he ran, when Walter Payton ran, what, like the opponents didn't know that Walter <laughs> Payton was going to run the football? You got to stop him. Yeah. I mean, that's laughable. And when you have a great quarterback that can throw the football, what is that? Is is that a mystery? You know the ball's going to be thrown in the air. A runner's going to run the ball. You put your defenses to stop. If you can stop them, fine. More often than not, guess what? You can't stop the great ones. 
You know, one of the, one of the hidden parts of this whole equation and, and uh, our insistence that it's ridiculous for Trubisky to, to have not played at least five or six series in the first two or three games anyway of the preseason. And you're saying, oh, big deal. Let it go. You're, you're, you're old fashioned. No, 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 no. Part of the reason I think, I think if you talk to people that watched every practice, and I know people that were there for every practice, and they don't practice like we did, but they said he was horrid in practice, throwing interceptions, I remember making that. bad reads, yep. making horrible throws. You know, it was almost like instead of thinking somehow, some way, we got to get him out there and make him better, they're going to hide him, keep him under wraps. Remember, that was the mantra. We're keeping everything under wraps to spring it on the Packers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's it's they sprung it, it. Yeah, it sprung for one touchdown in two games. That's his. He's a flawed coach. He's a his system is flawed, and it's been going on for two years since he's get, since he's been here. He can't figure it out. Why would you trade Jordan Howard, who I thought was one hell of a runner, had a problem catching a ball, but you trade him and get rid of him for a sixth round draft choice? What what are you thinking about? Keep that kid here. You draft Montgomery out of Iowa State, supposed to be a great runner. Now you got a one-two punch. What are you thinking about? Trade Jordan Howard, and he's with the Eagles, and you get a sixth-round pick. He's a hell of a lot better than you getting a sixth-round pick. That's another mistake by this outfit. You know, the irony of all of this, and it's just moments away for us leaving the air, I just want to say, this BU, we heard him say it a minute ago, that Andy Reid taught him to to be himself, be you. He's trying to make Trubisky into something he's not. He's not letting Trubisky be whatever he could be by not adapting the offense to him. Does that make sense? Well, it's the same thing. That's, with Jordan. In, that's the irony of this whole equation. Right. Well, it's the same thing with Ovi's teeing up with, with Jordan Howard. Hey, man. How do you get rid of him? You, that running back doesn't fit into our system. Dude, what you, system? Right, right. You, 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 you take the talent that you have and you put it to develop it. Right, as best as, and 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 Nagy has struggled with that. Uh, he's not letting anybody be themselves. He's trying to uh, in whatever well, offensive concept that he that he thinks he's going to make. It's not working. And the reality is too. He's he's going nowhere. So hopefully he learned a lot this year. But all that being Hopefully said, doesn't sound like it. Hey, yeah. all that being said, I saw a bunch of teams play their guts out today. The four worst teams in football, they went into overtime. They were scratching and clawing. Let's go out there and scratch and claw these Chiefs tonight and see if we can't find a way to wreck their season. 20 seconds. Give me scores real quick. What do we got? 25-10 Chiefs. I I I I I'm no, I have no idea. Pull it for the Bears to win. But only they got to move out, pal. Let it go. We will see you for the post game show. Karen Conti's coming up right now. We're here at 10 37 20 WGN. On the station with the best Bears coverage, 720 WGN Radio. Yeah, we are here. 26 to 3. The home season comes to an end. The Bears are 7 8, 7 and 8. Hamp and OB with Kaz taking uh-huh. it up to midnight. As uh, it doesn't get much uglier than it did tonight at Soldier Field, I'll always remember the Eddie Pinheiro 46-yard field goal. That was a moment uh, that, you know, hey, Hamp, they found a kicker. There we go, Pinheiro, 2020. Hey, just like, you know, like we said in the pregame, like we've said on um, pretty much every week, uh, nothing says, you know, happy holidays and Merry Christmas like an embarrassing kick in the head to close out the regular season with bookend efforts by the mighty Chicago Bear offense under Matt Nagy and uh, Mitchell Trubisky with three points in the home opener and three points in the home closer. Again, no touchdown in home opener, no touchdown in the home game today. today. You know, and and at some point, you just got to shake your head and, and say, what the hell was he doing at the end? You know, this turned into a preseason game. You know, the last drive, calling timeouts when the game was completely out of hand, completely out. Uh, and if that really is his his buddy, his mentor on the other side of the field, what was he having the, the Bears offense out there in this meaningless, you know, idiotic, uh, futile attempt for a touchdown in the, the closing seconds of 
of the game when everybody knew it didn't matter. It didn't. It, only thing could have happened is somebody get hurt. And you know what? If he really loved his buddy, uh, you know, the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy boy, Reed. that really would have been a, a stocking stuffer. I tell you what, <clears throat> God forbid what you just uh, jumped on, Dan, is that in those last minute and a half or so, the way Kansas City was playing to eat up the clock so he doesn't embarrass his friend across on the other side of the field. And that is the wrong thing to do as a head coach. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why. The reason why you've got your 11 guys out there that are playing offense and they're built to score with one of the, which will, will go down as one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play this game in Patrick Mahomes. And you're out there and just dribbling, drabbling, so you don't embarrass your buddy on the other on the other sidelines. God forbid, God forbid, one of your players went down and ended his career, or couldn't play until next year. You don't play football that way, folks. That's a disgrace. And you, talking about a disgrace, what was it with? I think we were fourth and twenty three. Somewhere's around midfield, give or take a little bit one way or the other. Okay? And you're a quarter. We're fourth and 23 yards to get a first down. So what do you do then? You take all your receivers, throw them down into the end zone, get your quarterback drop back, and unload it. What could happen? Number one, we could actually catch the damn ball. Okay? Number two, it could be intercepted, which is the same thing as a punt. Or more often than not, out goes the penalty flag. And the game cannot end on a penalty flag. We don't even try to do it. You know what this numbskull nincompoop quarterback did? He threw a check down. Fourth down and 23 yards to go. You One where I'm upset here? Is that how you play football? Is that why? How do you play football to win? And you think you're a contender? You don't score one touchdown, not one, again. My God, Nagy, you are you are so incompetent. There aren't words to cover you, pal. All right, and, and we're going to get to this thing top to bottom. And you know, I, I hate to say it, we we predicted this, didn't we? Oh, not? Danny, that's is a yeah. But 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 still, there was a lot of guys on the Bears roster that really fought it out tonight. Our two linebackers, and you know what? What is it, Pierre Lewis? Uh, another Pitt. idiotic, roughing the kicker, enabling a drive to continue for a touchdown against us. But he played his butt off and quit Koski. He, uh, once again, our two inside linebackers, K- Khalil Mack, the best game he's played all year. What was he doing hitting tight ends instead of rushing the passer? $141 million to get him to, to jam the tight end? Are you kidding me? But here's... Here's the thing that really killed it for me. You know, this team is not very good. We got limitations at quarterback. We got limitations on the offensive line. We got limitations in our play calling, our head coach, and our offensive coordinator. But at the end of the day, it was a team that was undisciplined. Think about this. 95 hit the quarterback, uh, hit Mahomes, needlessly drew a penalty that kept a drive alive. Uh, Again, in a third and four, we jump off sides. Uh, Aaron Lynch, 99, jumps off side, gives him a first down, keeps the drive going for a touchdown. Uh, Kwiatkowski, 44, uh, hands to the face. It's a penalty. It keeps the drive going. Uh, Pierre Lewis, once again, roughing the punter. And then at the end of the game, uh, Urban, 92, hands to the face. All of those plays are typical of a team without discipline. And you can talk about Trubisky, you can talk about it, but you know what? It starts at the top and it comes, to, yeah, and it rains down. You have to have a discipline structure on this team. This team is playing by the seat of their pants. Danny, what you're talking about, this is game 15, by the way, of a 16 game schedule. And again, playing at home. And what Dan Hampton, the litany of things that he just went through, only tells you one thing. Where do you think that comes from? The, the stu- stupidity of the players? Where do you think that comes from? Coaching. It's coaching. Our lack of. Very good. Lack of coaching. Poor coaching. Whatever you want to call it. My God, from last year going into this year, it was all, we all think it's going to be roses, peaches, cherries, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll tell you what, the number one thing, we've got one more game to go. I'm going to tell you right now, 
The biggest fault is right on Nagy and his coaching staff. They did not have these kids ready to go after the Super Bowl. They did not have them ready to be a world champion. There was no timing in our passing game. There was no separation from, for our receivers. There was no timing in our run blocking. We had a quarterback that is herky-jerky back there. He can find his main receiver, can't find second, third receiver. Lucky he can find the little outlet pass. Let that alone. But I'll tell you, this is, you know, folks, this has been going on game after game with this guy. I'm, and this guy I'm talking about, Nagy. You, again, what I said here five minutes ago, fourth and 23, and you throw a check down? They're on their own 46-yard line. 46-yard line, you, you try a check down, and you don't try the one play that the Green Bay Packers, the, my God, any coach or quarterback that has half a brain in their head. Flood the zone down deep and let the ball go. That's your only chance. Well, they had the playoffs on the line, OB. It was sitting right there for them. Well, it's really sad. And, you know, folks, we appreciate you tuning in. And this will be our last uh, post game uh, immediately following the game. We, next week, we're going to be on a, 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 at a 730 to 930. A later uh, a time. A special time. A special time slot. I like that. Special time there we slot. Go. But give us a holler. Tell us what you think about the way not only the Bears played this season, but unfortunately how poorly prepared this team was to defend the NFC North crowd. Well, it started opening kick of the opening game. I'll tell you what, Danny. I can sit there, and I, I mean, I've never been a fan of this guy. I didn't even like him when he was at Kansas City. They're winning a playoff game. As a matter of fact, I believe it was against the Eagles. Tennessee Titans. I, I, I uh, Tennessee Titans, right? Yeah. Who never should have even been in the playoffs, and they're winning what twenty and nothing halftime, twenty-one to three, and never score another point and lose the game. Guess who the offensive coordinator and play caller was, folks? Nagy. Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. If you want to jump on in here, we'd love to take your calls. Kaz is going to join us coming up after this timeout, so he'll take calls with you as well. Going up to eleven o'clock, we're with you till midnight. Hampton will be with Kaz, sponsored by your Chicago Land. And Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers. Uh, yes, the Bears did lose to the Chiefs at home, twenty-six to three. The, you guys didn't even mention what I thought was the most painful thing about the night. For me, watching Patrick Mahomes in your face on Soldier Field, doing seventeen zillion creative things, throwing beautiful passes, third and eighteen, Tyree Kill sprints out, running ninety million miles an hour, stops beautifully on a dime, the ball's in his hand. We could be watching that every week. How much fun would that be? Oh, I would, but you know, again, that, <laughs> we can't regift. We can't. We got. We, we can't got regift. We, we, we've got number ten. We've got. We un, we unwrapped our Whether present. You like it or not, we, hold your nose. We got it. All right, uh, Kaz coming up with your calls three one two nine eight one seventy two. I want to see. Yeah, in, in tomorrow's the press. Are they going? What are they going to say about Nagy and his play calling? Again, not one touch. Down, scored in 60 minutes of football. We'll see. Not one. I don't. Folks. Think, I don't think it's going to be a lot of flowers and chocolate in the paper tomorrow. We'll, but or at wgnradio.com, whatever Adam Hogue's going to write. All right, Kaz coming up 7:20 WGN. If you don't raise the bar, nobody's going to try to give you anything extra. You got to demand it. Back to the Chevy Hamp and OV Show with Kaz, sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com. Right now on WGN Radio. Bears wrap up the home schedule at four and four. They're seven and eight overall as the Chiefs take this one twenty six to three. Quarterback numbers: Mitchell Trubisky, eighteen of thirty four, one hundred and fifty seven yards. He was sacked three times, no touchdowns, no interceptions. Quarterback rating of sixty five point four. That's the ninth time he's been under eighty this year. Patrick Mahomes, 23 of 33, 251 yards, a couple of touchdowns. He ran one in as well, quarterback rating of 112.1. Hampen will be with Kaz as we bring in Glenn Kozlowski. Hampo, what's, what, what's, what's, what's cooking over there? Well, you know, again, you, you look at the numbers, and, and, and I, I made this, this point in the pregame. You know, numbers, the, 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 you know, the old saying that, uh, you know, stats are for losers, whatever. You know, the only thing that matters is the final score. And... I'm looking at this, you know, the, the the spreadsheet here, and you know, how, how, folks, I, I'm just I, I'm bewildered. You know, here's 
a guy that was brought in to coach the, the, the bedrock of the NFL. And here in his second season, with the second pick overall in the draft at quarterback, now in his 41st game? 41st. 41st game as a starter, and we couldn't score a touchdown to close out the season for those magnificent Bear fans over in those stands desperately. And let me tell you something. Patrick Mahomes was no magic man tonight. He had a couple of really nice throws, but overall this was let's get this over and get back to Kansas City game. True. And you know what? How pathetic is that? Not only do we kind of think, oh, we we could be contenders. They, they, let me tell you something, folks. They had They had – no worries. They kicked this thing off. They were laughing all the way through this game. And you know who they're laughing at? They were laughing at us. Kazi, welcome in. Your thoughts? Twenty six three. Chiefs beat the Bears. Chiefs are eleven and four. Bears are seven and eight. They got the Minnesota Vikings at noon next week up in Minneapolis. Hang on a second here. Oh, Kazi, go ahead, my friend. Can you hear me? I got First you now. Off, I got you. Okay. I want to say, you know, I, I think Ed and Dan, we both. We, all three of us got a great gift from George McCaskey, our jersey, right, with our name on it. So I want to thank him. And then I want to say to him, listen to what we're saying tonight. We are not telling you. We're not saying, you know, the, the world is coming to an end. But if you love the Bears, which I know he does, Ed and, and, and Dan, Ryan Pace is to blame for all of this. This guy is a complete disaster, and it was like watching a JV team play a varsity team tonight in high school. So the varsity team was Kansas City, and we were the JV team. We have a really good defense. We have a great defense. But you know why Kansas City talked to our quarterback that we moved up to draft and get? Because he was the third best quarterback in that draft. So everybody in football knew he was the third best quarterback. How many times are there three or four great quarterbacks in a draft? Once every twenty years? I mean, it's it's a joke. Maybe so. Maybe right. So right. here we are. We've got this guy leading our our you know uh, uh, our our uh, our offense. We have a uh, a coach that was uh, you know I mean Andy Reid basically laid down tonight. And just try to protect his players and keep the game close so he didn't embarrass one of his young students, is what I like to call it. But it is embarrassing. And we have become a laughing stock. And it's something that George McCaskey can change if he looks and tries to find a real general manager. Chris Collinsworth tonight, guys. I mean, this guy... Somebody must have whispered in his ear, hey, you're being too hard on the Bears and their quarterback. So he tried to back off. But what he really did is just explain why we stink. We stink because we only have one wide receiver. We don't have a tight end. We don't have a running back. I mean, you you start going through the list and you're going, well, whose fault is that? It's Ryan Paces. He is the uh, general manager that drafted this talent. And it's disgusting to watch. And I don't blame the players. I blame him. I'm sick of it. Can't stand it anymore. Well, you make good points there, Glenn. Very, very good points. You know, I'm just looking at a couple things here. Average gain per pass play. Average gain per pass play. You know what? We were, were 3.6. Is that good? Oh, isn't that great? Is that great? good? Are you kidding me? Does the word vomit come to mind? Three point yeah, six. Are you kidding me? It's embarrassing. Me? I mean, honestly, I'm. Uh, it, this is the cornerstone franchise to the National Football League, and we are running this garbage out there. And we've got, uh, uh, you know, you, you see Ryan Pace sitting up in the box tonight. And honestly, it's. Uh, I'm looking at the product out on the field. Who's the pro bowler out there? Other than on defense, there's no Pro Bowlers. Well, Al well, Robinson should have hey, gone to the Pro Bowl, hey, but hey, guys, hold well, on. but I get it. One wide receiver right. because he can, t- you know, he goes and attacks the football and catches more footballs than anybody else with the worst quarterback in the NFL. He is a he is a backup at best, and we we moved up in San Francisco. 
who, you know, looks like right now if they win next week, all everything goes through San Francisco, right, for the NFC. So, oh, yeah, we really, uh, we really fleeced San Francisco, didn't we? Well, all right, we're going to get to the phones. But, let, folks, let me just tell you, the, the, the Kansas City Chiefs were out there yawning and going through the motions, and yet they only had seven possessions tonight, Kaz. They went touchdown, field goal, touchdown, come out, of, and that went to half. And then they had two punts in the third quarter, but then to close it out, touchdown, field goal. We went punt, punt, punt. And then we ran a Chinese fire drill out there right at the end of the uh, first quarter. What a, what a pathetic, pathetic joke of a two-minute drill that was. I mean, it's, it's laughable. You know, a, a high school team does that. I say to myself, how pathetic is that? This is the Chicago Bears, and that's what we got. And then in the second half, we lost out on downs. We kicked them a field goal, and then we lost out on downs, lost out on downs. How inept was that? Let's take some calls coming back JV here with Kaz. Kazi, hang on. Yeah, that's it. JV football. That's what we should call it, right? Yep. Hang on one second for me, Kazi. We'll come on back. We'll take your calls with Kaz. 312-981-7200. Phone lines are full right now. Uh, Bears lose to the Chiefs. 26-3 to with you till midnight. We'll play some Matt Nagy as well. And, uh, Do we have to? We, we, we Do not play that individual. Please. There's an ultimatum coming from OB. I don't want to hear him anymore. Oh, he, he just, all he does is do, 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 do. It doesn't make, it's just nonsense. Who cares what I'm he says? I'm still going to try to get a little snippet of, of him. Oh, we're going to, we're, we, we got to go back and figure out what we did wrong. And we're going to get better and work on it. <laughs> and, you, and we have our quarterback, back, Mitch Trubisky, got, and he's got my back. Dead, I got his better. back. Everybody's got everybody's back. Uh, the raccoons. Got the snakes back. It's that day. Oh, Jesus. 720 WGN. And a first and goal. And Mahomes throws. That'll be caught. And that is a touchdown. Travis Kelsey. So the drive was sustained because of the running into the kicker penalty on a fourth down and four. And in they go. That made it 17 to zip. That was right before halftime as the Chiefs put this game away early. Bears lose to Kansas City 26-3. to Hampton OB with Kaz till midnight. My name is Mark Hyman. We're going to take some calls right now here, OB. Before, before we yep, do that, go ahead. just one thing to our listeners. We, you know what? You, you've seen it all year. We don't score touchdowns, okay? You've seen the game plans, offensive game plans, week after week after week, Okay. The only teams that we beat, Detroit, you know, we played them twice. They've only won three games. Dogs. We played we the beat Giants. Dogs, Ed. Pardon? That's all. We, beat we beat dogs. We beat dogs. Bad team. Yeah, there's no, no question about it. Here's my point. We're going to have Nagy during the offseason, into the mini camps, in the training camp, into the exhibition season, and all next year. We didn't score touchdowns last year. We didn't score touchdowns this year. Our game plans are horrible. And guess what? You're going to get a full-fledged boat of it, folks, all next year. With Trubisky at quarterback and Nagy calling the plays. Now, the good thing about next year is the schedule is going to Nine games, up. guys, that we did not score a touchdown in the first half. Ten. Think about what I just said. Nine games this Ten. Year. Ten after today. Ten. It was nine. Yeah, you're right. I take it back. Ten after today. Yeah, you're right. Nine times. Ten games. What, we, what do you think we did last year? Was the same That's damn a thing. Joke. That's embarrassing. It, 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 <laughs> but you know what? It, it, it goes beyond Nagy. I mean, Nagy is a byproduct of our general manager. Get rid of him. And then you get a real head coach. I'm just telling you, that's how this works. I, I agree with you, Glenn. L let's right. get some calls in here. Let's start. Callers. We appreciate you. Show is for you. Dan in Glendale Heights, welcome to 720 WGN. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, guys. Nice to talk to you. I got a question. Do you guys really think that the Bears are going to be serious about getting a veteran quarterback in here? Now, I'm thinking about Bridgewater, and I know he's going to cost money, because he's going to cost money because he's going to come in here and he's going to be the starter. So do you, do you guys really think they're going to go out and spend that money? They spent it on Matt. Why won't you spend it on the most important guy on the team, the quarterback? Dan, Dan, Dan let, me, let me jump in. I'm going to give you a quick answer. That will not happen. 
Trubisky will be our quarterback next year. Come hell or high water. So Believe what I just said. Fired, right, Ed? Pardon? Unless, the, you know, Pace and uh, Nagy get fired, which isn't going to happen. It's, We're well, be yeah, but you know what, though, Glenn? It's not going to happen. That, that has happened before, though. You've got Tom. I hope so. You've but got we Tom, need it. You've got Tom Brady, who's a free agent. You've got Philip Rivers, who's a free agent. You got Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, James Winston's probably going to go back to Tampa. He'll be franchised or, or brought Wait back. A minute. You got. Listen. You think Tom Brady would come in here? No. And take orders from Nagy as a head coach? No. With those game plans? No. He'd walk off the field. The only hey, you can list all of them: Tom Brady, Bridgewater. Nobody's going to come in here. Save somebody like Case Not, Keenum. That you could get for six million dollars for one year, you know. Guess what? Chase Daniel is making seven million, but we've already seen his show. But here's the thing: it's not going to happen with this general manager. No, he's married to Trubisky. Both of them will have to go. Which is why, right? In the off season, in last year's draft, and Nagy said that he liked Gardner Minshew, who went in the sixth round. You could have picked him instead of Riley Ridley when. Mitch got hurt this year. You have an opportunity to put a young guy in there. If he plays better, it's your way out of the whole thing. Rather than spending huge money, they didn't draft a quarterback. Maybe they'll but do see, it this then, year. Then he would show how incompetent he is if a sixth rounder beat out his move up to Aaron. get the second overall pick. See, he's in a no win situation. This kid will never be what we want him to be, and yet Ryan Pace will never allow someone to come in and prove it. Before we go to the callers, let me one, say one more time. Mitchell Trubisky will be rammed down your throats. They are not ever going to admit that they made the biggest mistake, biggest mistake probably in the history of the NFL draft by taking this kid. Go to the callers. Three one two. He's a joke. You're right, Ed. The whole thing is a joke. Ryan Pace is a joke. Yes. Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. Mark and Darian, welcome to seven twenty WGN. Go ahead. Hey guys. Uh, two things. One, uh, the tight end. Nobody threw to the tight end tonight. Nobody's throwing to any tight end. Uh, I was listening to we earlier games. One. That's the problem. And that's the right. key. Uh, you need a Gronkowski. You need a Kelsey. You need, uh, the tight end from, uh, uh, Baltimore who scored two touchdowns today. You ne- George Kittle from the 49ers. You need a quality tight end. Item two, Chuck Pagano versus Vince uh, Fajano. Vic Fajano. I, 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 I hate to say close that. Enough. Yeah, I, like I ordered that at a, a restaurant Not even close, Fajano. Right? Parmigiano and Fangiano. We got it. It's you're right, Mark. Yeah. You're right. And every every team in the league that is going to be a threat this year or any year has a competent tight end. We don't. It's just that simple. You know, the most important position in this. And you know, Collinsworth, I thought had some good comments tonight. He said the tight end is the easiest throws on the field. We only threw it to Holtz on a screen one time. Three. And that's the problem, though, guys. We cannot identify quality talent. The only thing he can do is, you know, Ryan Pace, is find guys that already played in the NFL and overpay them. Let's be honest. Robinson, Akeem Hicks, um, Khalil Mack, these are not guys that he drafted. And they're the best players on the team. It's simple. Absolutely. And, I mean, it, that, that and, and, you know, at the end of the day, an NFL team has to live on the lifeblood of the draft picks. You cannot continue to go out and pay premium prices for all of these free agents. You're right. First uh, rounders. Go to the caller, please. Okay, we're going to do that in a second, Obi. We've got to take a real quick time out. Two minutes. We're coming back to the calls here. And, and by the way, just to name it, the, the, the Ravens, they got three tight ends. They got, they got a bunch of guys catching balls. Nick Boyle, Hayden Hurst. I mean, they got a lot of guys running around make, making plays, just for the record. We had seven tight ends active this year. Jesper. Seven tight ends. <laughs> None could catch a ball. <laughs> Jesper Horstead caught one tonight. He looked sweet. All right, quick timeout, 720 WGN. Going for it. It's got to be a pick play of some kind. And it's a little fade to Robinson, and it's broken up by Traverius Ward. 
Well, that was the fade to the corner. Our big drive that uh, did not happen. Do you? Did you know, Dan Hampton? By the way, Hampton will be with Kaz on 720 WGN. That that zone fade works one out of. Yep, ninety nine. Uh, I think it was ninety. It's compl- the success ratio was ninety nine out of four hundred and three or something. So it's a fourth of the time. Right. One. Y- and, and and the whole the whole key is to have an athletic receiver, but more importantly, have a quarterback that knows how to throw it at a proper trajectory where it goes over the defender and then drops in right on the pylon, <clears throat> which of course Trubisky muffed it. That was also a fi- to the a, defensive back. A fifteen play drive. Uh there's been thirty of those in the NFL this season. Three of them resulted in turnovers on downs. Two of the three that resulted in turnovers on downs like tonight were the we're Chicago just lucky, Bears. Aren't we? Yeah. It's we are we are nothing it's just uh, it's called incompetence. We're, you know and and, and Nagy says B U how about be competent somehow, some way, which he hasn't been all year. One of the texts coming in tonight was, Nag, you should change it to, instead of be you, be someone else. That's funny. Be there. competent. There you better. go. Hey, time for the Mueller Game Changing Moment, sponsored by the Mueller Auto Group with family-owned dealerships in Highland Park, Gurney, and Hoffman Estates. Mueller Automotive, you will not be disappointed. Uh, anybody? Game Changing Moment? Anyone? Game Changing Moment? Yeah, it started, if it wasn't coin toss, it was essentially the Bears... Got the ball on the opening kickoff. They farted around nine plays. They went 14 yards. And then we turned it over to Kansas City, where Mahomes and crew put together a 15-play, 82-yard drive for a touchdown. If you don't score another touchdown in the game, well, that's enough. That's the game changer. Yeah, it was the honor. About I mean, well, once he put it in the end me. zone, it uh, was over. I was Seven talking nothing. to him earlier in the evening, and, uh, and he, he's quite a Bear fan. He really is. And his whole family, his kids, they're great people. There's always a Mueller in the house. <clears throat> but anyways, to all my Jewish friends, have a happy Hanukkah and, and more important, a healthy 20 to you all. All right. Happy Hanukkah. Thank you, OB. It's, it is night one of Hanukkah for all you people that are celebrating out there. I love it. Especially to my Only friend Mike Mueller. Can He's a good man. cover good everybody. Man. I love it. He, Mueller into Hanukkah. Into a Bears loss to the Chiefs, you can't get this. I mean, there's no other Bears post game show that will give you all that right here. Twenty six three, you're the man, Ob. There you go. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, Sunday night, Sunday night, Sunday night. What a glorious night it was, indeed. <laughs> Should have been to the surprise of absolutely no one what was going to happen. The Bears season was a Officially over in terms of any hope at the playoffs whatsoever. You got Patrick Mahomes riding into town with his Kansas City Chiefs, taking on the team that should have drafted them in 2017, but ultimately didn't because they had an infatuation with Mitchell Dan Trubisky. Everybody had to know how this was going to go down, right? It went down exactly. How the hell I expected it to go down. It went down exactly how the hell, frankly, it needed to go down. The Kansas City Chiefs rolled into Soldier Field on Sunday night and embarrassed the Bears. They humiliated the Bears. They brutalized the Bears. And they barely even had to try. Like, to me, when looking at that game on Sunday night, it was a critically important game. For Bears fans, the coaching staff, the other players, the organization. Because they needed to see the difference. They needed to see the difference between a real franchise quarterback and the quarterback that the Bears have instead. They needed to see Patrick Mahomes live in living color, in person, in a game that actually impacted the organization that they love. It's one thing to see Patrick Mahomes have an MVP season last year and say, well, that was last year. Look at the weapons he's got in that Chiefs offense, and he's got Andy Reid. You can come up with all of these different excuses because it's at a distance. It doesn't connect and resonate the same. But here, right here, right now, it connects and resonates, or at least it should, in the way that is meaningful, the way that is purposeful, the way that needs to happen. 
Like any real Bears fan to me, when people want to talk about, oh, you got to be a real fan. Any real fan should have wanted to have happen exactly what the hell happened on Sunday night, which is a only somewhat inspired, somewhat motivated Patrick Mahomes and Chiefs offense, knowing they got it in the bag, still spanking and dominating the Bears all over Soldier Field. And you watch that game, you felt like they weren't even really having to try. And they still dominated. The game was never in question. It was never in doubt. They beat the brakes off of the Bears 26-3. And by God, it didn't even feel like it was that close. And you look at this matchup, and it just so perfectly crystallized this 2019 season for the Chicago Bears. Mitchell Trubisky. In prime time, another <laughs> performance. Matt Nagy, play caller, in prime time. <laughs> another one of those performances. The defense that people want to talk about statistically is elite. Well, let's stop this crap once and for all. They're not elite. They haven't been elite this year. And even when you use measurements such as yards allowed or points allowed, that can be incredibly misleading. Because even high-powered offenses like the Chiefs, if they know they don't have to score 35 or 40 points to beat the Bears, the motivation level is not the same. The execution ends up not being the same. And teams can play a lot more conservatively in the second half because they know that the Bears have absolutely no chance of coming back and winning. That's the reality. So when you use like, well, the Bears are giving up this number of points and it's not that bad. No, as an elite defense, if they were truly elite, they would give up far fewer points. In this type of matchup, and granted, it wouldn't have mattered because Mitchell Trubisky sucks, Matt Nagy, the play caller, sucks, and this Bears team, specifically the offense, sucks as a result. The Bears defense could have at least allowed maybe 13 or 16 points. Then you could give it more of a college try to try and say they're an elite defense, but they're not. They're not. But it really comes down to, bottom line, is the offense. And if you're a Bears fan, if you have been still making excuses after excuses after excuses for Mitchell Trubisky, if this performance on Sunday night by him and the performance by Patrick Mahomes on Sunday night doesn't send you the message and doesn't get it through your thick skulls that Mitch isn't the guy, he's never going to be the guy, just because you want him to be, doesn't mean that you're a better fan, just because you want him to be, in no way, shape, or form, means that it's ever going to be true, so stop it! This is the game that the Bears organization, the freaking coaches, the players, fans, needed. It should have felt kind of therapeutic. Because it should eliminate all doubt. But of course we're talking about the Bears. So this organization that has made it to the playoffs eight times in the past 30 seasons somehow is going to get a freaking pass because we love the mediocrity of the midway. Oh, Ryan Pace will fix it. Based off of what? One playoff appearance in five years. It took him four years to even get a playoff team in his rebuild. Because he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. He screwed up the head coach once. Looks like he screwed up the head coach a second time. And oh, by the way, in a draft that featured two franchise quarterbacks and Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson respectively getting picked at 10 and 12, involving teams like the Chiefs and Texans trading up big time to go get these guys, the Chicago Bears panicked and went from 3 to 2 to take the one guy out of those top three that wasn't a franchise guy in Trubisky. And yes... I know that's in the past, and you can't change the past. But it's that past, it's that history that matters. Because if you don't learn from the past in history, you are doomed to fail. You are doomed to repeat it again. Why in the hell would you want to give Ryan Pace another opportunity when he already screwed up so horrendously bad at quarterback? So horrendously bad. It wasn't like the Bears missed out on Mahomes and Watson because they were taking at picks one and two, and Trubisky's what you had left at three, and they felt the need to kind of panic and have to take a young quarterback and hope it works out. No. He looked at Mahomes, he looked at Watson, and thought Trubisky was the best guy. And then didn't even understand how the draft was laid out and playing out, 
and thought he needed to move up to three to two. Which, mind you, if the 49ers were getting real offers for that pick, they sure as hell wouldn't have entertained moving down from two to three. Just saying. But it was so sad and embarrassing and just flat out boring to watch another mediocre Bears offense. Like, you've got an offensive minded head coach and the offense absolutely sucks. Like, they're significantly worse than last year. And as much as you can blame the regression of Trubisky on Trubisky, and that's valid, the blame's got to go other places, too. If Nagy hasn't sat there and delegated any of these play-calling responsibilities, then he must do so, or he must be fired. Like, this is the type of game that should have exposed just how foolish this Bears organization is, and just how foolish it is for so many fans to sit there and think that things are a whole hell of a lot better than they actually are. You saw a Chiefs team gave up half an effort, realistically, and still beat the brakes off your boys! Wake up! Wake up! This organization needs dramatic, radical changes. And to trot out Mitchell Trubisky as the unquestioned, unchallenged starter in 2020 shows that the Bears organization, Bears fans, have learned nothing, and it will be yet another wasted season in our lives as Bears fans. It is time to come to your damn senses. If that game Sunday night didn't do it to you, then honestly, you deserve the mediocrity that is to follow. Guys, we're going to take a couple more calls here. Let's get Jeffrey in Des Moines on 720 WGN. What's up, Jeffrey? Welcome to WGN. Yeah, Trubisky with nine games, 80 rating or lower, is that's the worst in the NFL? Yes. Um, as for Ryan Pace, a couple things, Adam Shaheen, also, the best draft pick he made this year was stolen off the practice squad by the Steelers. <laughs> the kid who runs a 4-4, it is lit it up for the Steelers. Also, that we can protect Ryan Nall running around on special teams. And as for Nagy, oh, my God, what in the hell was that challenge? He actually thought that that was a backwards pass? That was bizarre. I mean, it's idiotic. And again, Thanks com- for the call. be competent. You know, and, 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 and obviously he's on the other side of the field. The ball was thrown towards the Kansas City sideline. If you've got Stooges up in the box that can't see that. The pass was forward. It was. But if the Stooges in the box that you're listening to can identify that, what the hell are they coaching this team for? Let me Let him coach Why Detroit. Why are you even making that challenge, Dan? I mean, honestly, you're on he's the a field. Fool. You can see it. If you don't line up and watch the line of scrimmage, why are you a head coach? It's embarrassing. It's hey, a joke. Glenn, Dan, and Mark, I want to say one thing. You cannot fix stupid. No, you can't. You're right. Yeah, and you and said the same thing. my heart. Yeah, and you, my heart. And, and you said that about quarter. You, you know, one thing you can't fix in a quarterback is accuracy. You either got it or you don't. This kid ain't got it. Uh, no. A lot of those passes, they were, you know, like I said, you know, it was, it's just – it's a sad song. Listen, it's bad, and this is heartbreaking for us because we love the Bears. We love being a part of this organization in the past, and it breaks our hearts because we're watching something that I believe is easily fixed if you hire competent people. Isn't it that simple, guys? Well, you have incompetence hiring incompetence. Right. You're right, Ed. But, I mean, at some point, when do you go – Okay, let's just find a football guy. I mean, how hard can it be? If, if you know, uh, again, you know, Trubisky was the third best quarterback. Why were the Why were we the only guys that didn't realize he was the third best quarterback in that draft? How did we miss that? Kazi, gonna say goodbye to you. We love you. We'll see you for one more next Sunday, baby. All right. All right, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah. Did I cover everything, Ed? Listen, yeah, Merry Christmas and a healthy 20. <laughs> you got uh, it. To Head you home, and yours. Looking forward to seeing you again. Uh, Go out there uh, and clean that mess up on Soldier Field. Uh, uh, all right. Well, <laughs> yeah, guys, there you go. Bye. We'll see you next week. Uh, news coming up here. One more hour to go. Adam Hogue will be with us. Hampton will be on 720 WGN. Is again on third and eight. He throws and he's going to defer it again. And that's 
going to be a touchdown. Damian Williams into the end zone. All night long, the Bears cannot get off the field on third down. That is a true statement, Al Michaels. NBC, as the Bears do lose to the Kansas City Chiefs, 26-3. to Hampton will be with Kaz, taking up till midnight. Gentlemen, before we get back to the calls, let's just name it one more time here. The boos were all over Soldier Field, and rightfully so. Fans, as you mentioned, OB, Hamp coming out to pay their money, be out there Sunday night, just seeing an absolutely awful product. They've got the right to boo, and they did. Patrick Mahomes wasn't the greatest Patrick Mahomes, but he certainly was a zillion times better than the quarterback. You saw the head coach and the play calling and everything else look way off. You saw an undisciplined team. What do you think these guys are going to say when they when they have their end-of-season press conference? I mean, Ryan Pace hasn't spoken all year. What do you think that looks like? Well, and obviously it'll be more of what we've heard all year. It'll be, oh, well, we've got to go back and make corrections. And, and I think Nagy's first comment after the game was, we were too sloppy across the board. Translation, we were unprepared to play a competent NFL caliber football game on all levels. And right there, the defense can't get off the field on that bumper coming in. Al Michaels, everybody wants to go, oh, defense is great, great, Kansas City had the ball seven times. They scored five on, of, of those seven uh, possessions. We only made their punter punt twice. That's not great defense, folks. I'm sorry. Chuck Pagano, you got a lot of questions that need to be asked, too. Let's get to the call. Six for 11 on third down were the Kansas City Chiefs tonight. All right, 312-981-7200. Let's get uh, Mitch in displays. Mitchell in displays, I should say, on 720 WGN. Go ahead, Mitchell. It doesn't take Kreskin to figure out that this is a completely inept, uh, you know, club. You got the bottom line that basically the first 11 scripted plays were running plays by Bobby Douglas that went for basically nothing and they punted. Why don't they have an ability to throw down field? What you have is basically somebody who's playing out of position. You have a coach that does not have great chemistry with his quarterback because his quarterback can't read defenses. How many plays did you see that went horizontal? And we've seen it all year. And it get us nowhere. You know, you talk about the twenty six to three, okay? And you talk about the uh, the other victories with, with great teams, and then you want to hang your hat on all these pathetic teams like New York or Detroit, where we barely won when they were starting their third quarterback. And you have the temerity to come out and tell us how great this team is. The bottom line is this, folks. Dan, you know this one never. Yeah, and, and uh, Ob. I am so sick and tired of going along with what I call the corporate culture because we all need to drink the Kool-Aid uh, and pay all these increasingly uh, inc- uh, high-priced tickets. The game is suffering because you traded up for a number two pick who is a falling stock on a penny stock on Wall Street in the Dow Jones. Hey, and Mitchell, the idiots. Thank you, Mitchell. Mitchell. Let me tell you something. You were spot on, my friend. The only, the only you thing were I, spot on. I would quibble with that he was a penny stock because he, he, he they didn't realize that he was a penny stock. He was a rising stock. He was he was he was hot at the time. He was Qualcomm in 1998. Unfortunately, it just did not work out. Thank you for the call, Mitchell. Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. Let's get uh, Brian in Warrenville on seven twenty WGN. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, hello. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, just one thing that I noticed over the last couple of years is all the Bears receivers seem to do this and it's, it's, it's on every every different type of route. When the ball comes to them, they put their feet together and they jump. And so they, all they can really do is fall down. They can't adjust to the ball. They, they don't have ability to run. I mean, it, it seems like something that the coaches would see right away and say, you know, you don't have every not every, not every pass is a jump ball. Well, you know, it just seems... Well, you, you you know what, but you know the receiver performance this year was much better than in in years past, especially Allen Robinson, and but ultimately you have to understand these guys see this quarterback throwing to him in practice every day, and half the time the ball's in a poor location, and they don't they're trying to gather themselves to be able to make adjustments instead of 
running and catching the ball in stride, which is you know the essence of what a true quarterback is supposed to do: deliver it to the receiver in stride. But half the time, there if the ball's inaccurate, then they're having to kind of gather themselves, and that leads to drops. And the other part is maybe sometimes they're shocked that the ball is actually where it should be, and that's that's rather the uh, the uh, exception rather than the rule. Well, you're talking about routine, right, Hamp? Like, if professional athletes, they like to know what's happening. They like to know when they're practicing. They like to know where the ball's going to be. Tyreek Hill, on a third and 18, ran the route, and the ball was delivered perfectly by Mahomes before he even broke out of his cut, and then he turned, and the ball was right there. That is precision timing. That is why you go to practice. That's why you play preseason games so you can learn how to judge those type of throws and connections. That play was particularly impressive. Third, third and eighteen, and they picked it up. Um, the, the Chiefs did three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. Thank you for the call, Brian. John in Minnesota. Go ahead, John. Hey guys. Before the break, I think it was Cosmo to pass. What was the most important play of the game? And to me, it was uh, it happened on our, our very first series of the game. We completed three consecutive first downs. Then we tried to run a, a double option reverse, and we fumbled the pitch. And I, I think after that, we didn't convert consecutive first downs the rest of the first half. To me, that's that's an indication of Matt being you, Matt being Matt Nagy. He does not understand how to get put together. A, a offensive game plan that's going to that's going to football games. And that's the problem to see right there. You're exactly right, and there's no rhyme or reason in what they're doing. If you run the ball, then you set up the play action, and then once you start throwing the the quick slants, then the safety start jumping. That's when they out and the and the double move, you know, takeoffs or so. There's it's it's a grab bag with sixty seventy percent of the passes, you know, schematically being crossing routes that are short of the first down marker. It's nonsense. Let's uh. Let's. It's time, tell, gentlemen, to grade the Bears secondary as we look for something positive. How was the coverage today? It's sponsored by PPG Paints for the best coverage. Chicagoland Painters pick PPG. Uh, anybody? Thoughts? Uh, secondary. I would have to go <clears throat> uh, either a D plus or a C minus. Either one of the two. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Mahomes is a guy that can make you look pretty bad. And overall, we didn't have anybody with a glaring bust and, you know, a big touchdown bomb. They, we made him, you know, kind of chunk it out. I'd give him a C plus. But here's the bottom line. You know, Eddie Jackson may be going to the Pro Bowl, but he hadn't hit nobody all year. And think about how much of a, a impact our secondary had on the game. Virtually none. Right. Yeah, and I mean, they kind of did their job, but when you're playing a, a, a team or an offense or a quarterback like this, you need to make a couple of exceptional plays. We weren't anywhere around the ball. That's why I said D plus or C minus. There you go. And just even trying to pick out individual plays from this just whole blob of a mess of a game seems kind of fruitless to me. The whole thing was just disgusting. From the start to the finish, there was, there was nothing that stood out. Uh, it was all bad. Okay, so we have five cats, and they play with little toys. And stuff. It was like the Kent City Chiefs were kind of playing with us all night. Right. And when we kick a field goal, oh, well, they wake up and go down and score a touchdown, basically say, go to, go to sleep. Yeah. And we did. Chicago knows best, right? Hit up Facebook and tell Chicago's best TV where you like to eat. Watch Chicago's best Sundays at 10 p.m. on WGN-TV. Your pick may be Chicago's best. Adam Hogue's coming up from Soldier Field at 11.30 or so. Your call's coming up next, 720 WGN. Man up about it. Hey, put the ether can down for a second. It's the Chevy Hamp and OB Show with Cars. And it's brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers at ChevyDriveChicago.com on 720 WGN Radio. Bears lose to the Chiefs, 26-3. to We're with you till midnight. Hampton will be with Kaz, which is brought to you by your Chicagoland, Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer, ChevyDriveChicago.com. And thank you to Bartolini's. The chicken was the best part of the experience tonight. Maybe the stuffed shells could have been the dessert, Hampo. A lot of good it things. It was a ph- phenomenal. The chicken, the salad, the meatballs, but... 
tonight. The stuff shells off the charts. They have been fantastic all year. Hey, here, guys, let me just say this. You know, OB was screaming in the pregame, go downfield. This is it. You know, wh- wh- what do we got to lose? It doesn't matter. It's Christmas Eve, Sunday night, football. Hey, let's go. The big tough Chiefs, playoff bound Chiefs are in town. What are we going to do? Throw down. What do we do? Five out of the six first plays of the game, they had goofball Trubisky running around and they were whacking him. And then we try that reverse to Anthony Miller where he botches it and we get a big loss and then we have to wind up punting. Instead of throwing the ball out, we're doing kind of junior high nonsense. So it's just. Typical of Matt Nagy and this idiot offense that he's trying to foist on us. You know, you know what? How about you mean? There's not one position coach or an offensive coordinator, defense, or a coach, anybody. Some. How about a secretary can go to George McCaskey or to Pace or even go right in Nagy's off? What the hell are you thinking about? You couldn't score touchdowns last year. Your game plan stunk, and you came, come out this year. Again, everybody's looking for something, and what do you do? 15th game, and you can't score a touchdown? You're game planning for four quarters, and you can't score a touchdown? My Lord! It's unacceptable. All right, let's get to the call. They did get to the red zone. I'll always remember that the 15-play 80-yard drive in the – Floater to Robinson in the corner. That, it was, it was, it's sad. It, it was, really is. It, it was. I, this was. This one was straight disgusting. It really was. Thomas in St. Charles, welcome to WGN. Go ahead. Hey, Hamp, OB, and Kaz. It's a pleasure to talk to you guys. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, Dan, you're in my top two bears of all time, you and Walter Payton. So God bless you. Thank my you. Point, yeah, my point is I know you're an expert, and I know you both. all you guys are experts. And I've called... Um, your you know radio station south of your of you guys on the dial a couple weeks ago, and I was told by their football expert that none of football fans like myself who've been season ticket holders since '82 possibly could know what we're talking about when we criticize uh, Matt Nagy. Um, you know, teams undisciplined, bad play calling. I mean, everything you guys are saying, and as far as what Ob just said, somebody going up to Mrs. Hallis, and, and saying, what the hell is going on here? If you've got guys like Hub Arakesh that are constantly telling people how great Matt Nagy is, he needs to be held accountable. And, and, and I thank you guys so much for speaking exactly what the fans are saying because those guys are telling most of the fans that call in that they're fools, that they don't know football because they're fans. And Matt Nagy forgot more than we ever know. But everything you guys are saying is exactly what people sit in the stands and see and say. He's not an NFL football head coach. He's not ready now. He might know football, but he does not know how to call plays. And that quarterback is a backup at best. So thank you guys both for calling it out how it is. And we need people on the radio more like you guys who are true experts that played the game that know what the hell they're talking about. And thanks for my call. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, and you know, congratulations to you on your your uh, intellect. You found the proper station. <laughs> Keep it locked to us on the post game. Thank Th- you. Thomas, that's a very good call, and thank you much. 312-981-7200. Appreciate the call. Let's get Dave in Wisconsin who wants to talk about discipline. What's up, Dave? How you doing, guys? That guy that just called is probably one of the greatest callers you ever had because he almost took all the words out of my mouth, what I was going to say. This team, on these other stations, they don't tell it like it is. They think you're wrong when you're calling and talking about Nagy or Trubisky. Maybe they've got to keep their jobs as reporters when they get in front of these guys. Maybe they've got to keep their jobs as the newspapers or the columnists. But I'll tell you guys, there is absolutely, and like you said, Dan, before the station, before the, um, or as the show just started, there is absolutely no discipline on this team whatsoever. You ever see any coaches hollering at anybody? All of these penalties tonight. If I was a coach, Dan would Abe or and Ed would Abe Gribben, George Hallis, um, Buddy Ryan, put up with some of this stuff in these penalties and not say anything to you when you're coming out of the game, you'd have your butt kicked. I personally saw George Hallis in Green Bay my very first game in nineteen fifty seven, kick one of his players in the butt for not playing well. That's why I become a Bear fan. But this is just unbelievable, this 
pansy, these patsies that go into these press conferences, and then this this club dub crap. When you're three and five, they win a game, guys, and all of a sudden you go four and five, and we have to have a club dub. Can you imagine George Hellas after playing a bad game and but still winning, but playing a bad game? Any of these good coaches ever go into something like that? Nagy is a false coach. This guy couldn't coach. Let me tell you one more reason, guys. Very important. I was told in the other station too. Now you're wrong. You're wrong. They had a, they had an easy schedule last year. They don't seem to think so. These other people. They had an easy schedule. All right, Dave. Yes, they did. You. Yes, they did, Dave. And they got every break in the book last year. Every bounce of the ball. Everything you could say again. Twelve victories. Eleven of my defense. The only game an offense won for him last year was against Tampa Bay. Period. So, look. You you can, there you, the team's not. There, there's not going to be any massive changes coming here, right? All right, everybody want and 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 we, OB, you wanted to change head football coaches after game one last year against Green Bay. Literally, That's correct. Literally after Matt Nagy's first game. That's correct. But it's it, nothing. None of that is coming. So and what did I tell you before that? The year before that, Mr. Well, that, Bisky, you'll never win a Super Bowl with this kid at quarterback. Right, but so. But I think, what, I think what the fans are saying is, all throughout Beardum, Mark, is there's no accountability. There's no accountability. And that is what you can say whether you like it or about Hallis or Ditka or Buddy Ryan. They're the last ones that won a championship. It was, it was ultimate accountability. And I know for a fact a player makes a play, jumps off sides, hits somebody in the head, all these idiot things that we saw happen tonight. Guess what? That may be the first time, but there won't be a second time. Do you understand? And everybody understood. So what do you think goes on in the coaches' room right now? you got Chuck Pagano who's been around It's all forever. coddling. Hey, oh, yeah, hey. You know, we, we you see the field goal kicker, box kick and kick after kick after kick, and the coach go, everybody's over there patting him on the back. Oh, it's okay. No, no. Look him in the eye and say, it's not okay. There has to be accountability. Top to bottom. And what did he say after the game tonight? He said we were too sloppy across the board. This is the, this is him going up against the Darth Vader, his mentor. And this is the this is the crap that he puts on the field, has the quarterback run five out of the first six plays. This is pro football. It was a joke. It was a it was a Evan Costillo. Get Vuk out there. Let him put on I don't know, let's let him wear bet. let's let Put 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 a jersey on Vuk. Mine as well. Jesper Horstead, Vuk. What's the difference at this point? I mean, maybe Vuk would have lateraled. Maybe he would have hit Allen Robinson. All right, three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. Bears lose to the Chiefs twenty six to three. Adam Hogue. By the so, way, what was my pre pre game prediction? I think you said twenty five to ten. I said twenty five ten. That's pretty yeah, close. Yeah, you were right there. What uh, did I say? I told you twenty six to three. Yeah, you. That's what you did, Obi. I, <laughs> I think if we replayed the tape, you said I have no idea. I'm walking out of here. But that was. Right there too. Hey Adam Hogue, what was it like in person, my friend? Oh, it was like a three hour torture session of all the things that have gone wrong this season, right? I mean <laughs> the play calling, the quarterback play, the uh guy on the other side that was making incredible plays over and over again. I mean how about you have Patrick Mahomes? It's third and seventeen, and you just like effortlessly whips a pass right up the middle for 18, 19 yards, and then the Bears have a fourth and 23, and Trubisky checks down. I, I, I literally looked up at the scoreboard three times to make sure. I, I thought the scoreboard was wrong. Like, it had to have been third down. There's no way it was fourth down. But Adam, fourth down. Adam, you cannot fix stupid. Oh. So, this, yeah, it was fun, guys. This yeah, was, but, you know, Adam, again, we, you know, we've had a lot of callers call in, and everybody's frustrated. Everybody's upset about the fact that, you know, this was the golden moment, a 100-year anniversary, the Bears. And then this, we book in the season with a measly field goal in the opener and a measly field goal in the closer at Soldier Field. These fans are sick of seeing this idiocy foisted on them by – at Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy, but more importantly, we start the game out with our quarterback trying to run the ball five out of the first six plays. Have you ever seen something so juvenile? 
Yeah, I don't know what that was all about. I mean, it was I don't know if he was checking or just making the read. I, I thought, in fact, like the first play, he actually made the wrong read, but ended up picking up five yards. Um, you know, to kind of to touch on what you're saying, Hamp, and to take you inside the stadium. This season started with a primetime game against the Packers, and the atmosphere was electric. And walking around, even down uh, in the co- concourse underneath the stadium, uh, down a field level before that Packer game, I remember just like there were celebrities everywhere, and it was such a big deal. And the city was on fire; everybody was so excited. And then tonight, I did the exact same thing before the game, and this place was just dead. I mean, it was dead before the game even started. Nobody was excited. I was actually surprised there were 58,000 fans here. I'll give the fans credit for showing up. I thought they had plenty of excuses not even to come tonight. Um, But then they get rewarded with three points again, like you brought up. Three points in the opener, three points in this one. Get this, 15 games this season. The Bears have had 10 games where they don't score an offensive touchdown in the first half. I mean, that is just a recipe for disaster and, and amazing that, that that's even possible with the expectation we have for this offense coming in. Well, Adam, you know what? Go back to last year. Even though we won 12 games, go back. How many touchdowns did we score in the playoff game? How many t- against Philadelphia? How many touchdowns did we score? Then we open up this year with uh, Green Bay. How many touchdowns did we score? Now we're our last home game, the 15th game. How many touchdowns did we score? This has been going on for two years, and I'm not. I, and 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 I'm going to tell you something. As long as I've been doing this, I've never tiptoed through the tulips. If it's good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to tell you. Dan's going to tell you. Mark's going to tell you. We're not going to tiptoe and run. Oh, well, it was this. Well, it was a little problem here. He had a cough. It was this. It was that. No, you got outplayed and you got out coached. You got out coached tonight. That's what you got. You didn't have these kids ready to meet the match tonight. You didn't. In the opening game against Green Bay, you didn't have them ready to meet the Packers either. Why? You don't score a damn touchdown. How bad can you be? Adam, did you do the locker room or you were with, with the, the press conference? I'm curious what was going on as far as the reaction after the game, wherever you were. A uh, little bit of both. Uh, managed to make it in the both tonight. Um, I'll tell you this from the lot. Well, first of all, Mitch's press conference was extremely short. He just had kind of short answers for everything. Um, but the locker room was interesting. Uh, Khalil Mack you could tell he was uh, a little bit, I don't know, it's just different. And he said this. he was flat out embarrassed, and it wasn't just him saying it. it you, know, you could tell like he felt embarrassed. Um and then I had a, an interesting chat with Kevin Pierre-Lewis, who I thought was also interesting that in Nagy's opening statement, he singled that play out, the, the running into the punter penalty, because, you know, the Bears were still in the game at that point. They were about to get the ball back in, uh, you know, in the second quarter, and that gave the, the, the Chiefs another chance, and they ended up scoring the touchdown. You know, it was a huge play, and it was the second time that's happened this season. That's how they lost to the Raiders back in London. And um, I sent the audio in. You can actually call it, pull it up on Twitter. I posted the transcript, too, because he – I was just me talking to him, and Kevin Pierre-Lewis, I mean, just took total ownership of it, said he owes a debt – a gra- you know, uh, he owes a debt to the city of Chicago. Uh, clearly just, you know, distraught over committing the same penalty again – uh, you know, look, to be honest, I think tonight that wasn't the difference in the game like it was in London, but still, you hate to see it again. And it was just kind of a microcosm of the lack of discipline tonight and just way too many killer mistakes all over the every side of the, of the field. Yeah, just reading the quote here, this is pretty, this is a guy who's pretty self reflective. There's no excuse. It's my sixth year in the league. This is the second time that has happened this season. I personally feel as though I owe a debt to the city. I owe my teammates that grind, you know, when we're finally able to get off the field. You can't be selfish. And even though I'm trying to make a play, that's selfish. That's just all that is. And I have to look at myself in the mirror and reevaluate some things because I just can't do that. And this is the second time I can't do that. I mean, Hamp, we were saying that, OB, we were saying that obviously watching it. But the, you wouldn't hear Mitchell Trubisky's talk like that. 
That was a guy that, that's pretty impressive right there, even though the play was not impressive at all. Yeah, and I, I also followed up and asked him, you know, because I was a little confused why the pump block was even on there. I mean, you needed the ball. Um, it wasn't a full pump block. I think they were trying to get something for Cordero Patterson, who was lined up opposite on the opposite side and almost blocked one last week. Because Ke- Kevin said that he wasn't the guy that was supposed to get through there. But it just so happened that he was, and then he just had like a lapse in judgment and went for the ball uh, when he really shouldn't have. Um, so that just kind of explains the thinking, because I think a lot of people were questioning why they even had a pump block on. I was one of those people, but that's the explanation there. Hey, Adam, did anybody tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, ask Nagy uh, going into this game, we're out of it. Throw all caution away, go after it. Try to play big boy football, stretch the field, you know, with deep post patterns, hitch and go, fly patterns, skinny post patterns, do everything. Move the ball down the field. Get Trubisky out on sprint outs, on bootlegs, naked bootlegs. Move the pocket. Get motion going in our offense. Move the ball down the field. And because now we had nothing to lose. You haven't done it the last two years. Why didn't you try to do it tonight? And. And not only tonight, how about next week up in Minnesota? How about letting that kid play football the best way he knows how to, which he has stated himself, to move out of the pocket? What did you have to lose tonight by going down the field? And by the way, Adam, I think I'm correct on this. The Bears are the only team not to complete a pass over 40 yards in the National Football League this year. Is that true? Wow, I have to look that up. I mean, it sounds true. That's what uh, <laughs> Al Michael said during the broadcast. Yeah, I, it almost knocked me off the chair. Yeah, but, I, I mean, mean it that, sounds true. Well, but I mean, uh, duh. I hate to say it. I mean, you have to have good protection, accurate throws, uh, pr- uh, precise routes, and good catches. All those things. We don't do it. Danny, the point here and the, there spot. The point is, why didn't you open up tonight? Open up. Your, your offensive thinking, the philosophy, like other teams do. My God, look at New England, Green Bay, Detroit. Look at all of them. This was the perfect game that meant nothing but for you to try to set this offense in another avenue, another way of attacking the field, and you don't do it. The only thing you change, what, the first six, seven plays, we have our quarterback run it six times, five times. How about him throwing it down the field 40 yards, five times, six times? I just, I can't tell you the frustration because of the sheer stupidity of what this guy is doing and getting away with it. It's stupid. And I guess, like I said earlier, you can't fix stupid. So... I do think that there's an element uh, – well, here, I asked a variation of what you're bringing up, OB, because I asked him specifically at the goal line. I mean, this is a guy that last year was calling Santa Slay, Willy Wonka, whatever. I mean, there was like a play, you know, a crazy play for every situation down there inside the five-yard line. And today – not just today, but the whole season. There was none of that. The whole season, there was none of that. And – you know, tonight you have the weird play where Trubisky tries to run it on third down, and then they go, they throw a fade to Allen Robinson, which there's some numbers out there that show you that the end zone fades are actually not nearly as high percentage as you think they are. They're actually the numbers like 24 percent, and yet you're running it on fourth down when you don't. That's your last bullet. That's all you have. So, look, I think part of it is, and, and Nagy's never going to come out and say this, but a lack of trust. Think about it like they, they practiced this trick play at the, that they ran on the first drive where they flip it back to Anthony Miller and he drops the ball. And there was a shot play down the middle to Tariq Cohen early on the game that Trubisky did, didn't pull the trigger. That was the play where he ran out of bounds, which I can't believe happened again. He just runs out of bounds, takes the sack. Um, but there, Cohen was, I thought, open early on in that play and Trubisky didn't pull the trigger, and then you have him later try the deep ball to Allen Robinson. Wide open. Connect. Wide open. So I think, you know, I, 
I'm with you that Trubisky plays better when he's free and loose, and and it's true. But at the same time, I just I don't think they fully trust him to execute and make the right decisions. Uh, Isn't that sad? It really is, yeah, and you know that's is. that's that's the answer. And nobody will yeah. will fess up and say it. They don't trust the kid to operate a professional offense, and it's all gimmicks and and sleight of hand. And if it works, yay. And we'll read you at WGNRadio.com and, of course, the Hogan John podcast as well. Appreciate you, my brother. We'll talk to you next week. All right, good stuff, guys. One more. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Thanks, Adam. One more indeed. Adam Hogue out at Soldier Field. We'll rip through calls coming on back here with you to the top of the hour, 720, Hold w- on. 720 WGN. Don't got over in that direction. Meanwhile, Mahomes is going to go the other way. He's going to keep it. He's going to take it to the end zone. Touchdown, Chiefs. Boy, oh boy, we are a long way from October 17th when he's lying on the ground in Denver and it looks like the season is over to running in for a touchdown here at the end of December. 15 play, 82 yard drive. That was the first points of the game for Kansas City. It was uh, on a, it took eight minutes to make it 7 0. Of course, the Chiefs go on to win it 26 3. Hampton will be with you till the top of the hour. Jim Toronto, ready to rock and roll. We'll take you on your overnight tonight uh, coming up at midnight. The Defensive Player of the Game, sponsored by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealers, ChevyDrivesChicago.com. Anybody coming to mind? Pierre Lewis would, would, uh, Pierre Lewis would have a, a, a great uh, chance of being the player of the game, except for that boneheaded running into the kicker, which enabled the drive to continue. For the only other guy I could think would, again, is Kwiatkowski. Kwiatkowski. And, you know, Khalil Mack had more of an impact and, and effect on tonight's game than at any other game of the season. You know, and, and again, what a shame. you got three linebackers playing their bones off, and yet we, we are so inept that the Kansas City Chiefs just basically score at will. To his credit, and, and he has not had a good year, and he has, has named it himself, he gets named to the Pro Bowl this week, right? Him, Corderell Patterson, and Eddie Jackson. They ask him about it, doesn't want to, want to talk about it. Not not interested. I didn't have a good year. We didn't have a good year. I don't think I. Be, I, don't, I don't think he deserves. He he knows he's going on stri- on strict name recognition. Yeah, and and Nagy's going to be coach of the year too. So <laughs> there you go. All right, Stephen Edgewater, welcome to WGN. Go ahead, my friend. Okay, a couple of things. I got to suggest a new a nickname for Nagy. How about doormat Nagy? And um, yeah, and if the and if the uh, if the if the Bears were an airline, they'd be grounded for incompetence. You know. <laughs> Um, I mean, they're trying to tell you that the the pilot he's he's missing a runway, he's fly, needlessly flying into turbulence, and they're telling you that everything's okay. You know, he just needs development and things like that. Don't put him in the cockpit. Get somebody that can actually fly the plane. So you're basically appreciate the call, Steve. You're you're calling him the uh, the seven thirty seven max. I mean that that was what was grounded. You can call him seven three seven. Well, you, want. you can use a million analogies, and unfortunately, folks. I mean, this is something that we it's called reality. And it ain't going to change. You know, this general manager has found favor with George McCaskey and, of course, Virginia. And in their eyes, he's the golden boy, and Nagy is his his pick, and so is uh, Mitchell Trubisky. So uh, get the clothespin for your nose. If you think it's bad this year, we got one more game to go. <clears throat> if there aren't any changes, folks, watch out for next year. You think it's going to get any better? Stay tuned. Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred. We'll get in as many calls as we can here. Tom on the south side, go ahead. Hey, good evening, sirs. Tom. Both legends, Ed and, Ed and Dan. Uh, my question is: When does Ted Phillips be called on the carpet? Never hear his name. Does he have something to do with this mess? You brought it up right there, Tom. Appreciate the phone call. Thoughts, Ted Phillips. You know, well, Ob, you want to take this? <laughs> Look, folks, it, it all starts. <clears throat> it's the the general manager is 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 the center of the wheel. You could say, well, it's McCaskey, blah blah blah. They own the wheel, and they're the ones that tells the wheel where to go. But the wheel is the team, and the hub is the general manager, and he has to make decisions on coaches, 
players, contracts, all those different things. But here's 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 the, here's the booby prize. You know, and, and think about this. I was watching a movie the other day, and these guys in it bums, and they run, they rob a bank, and they put a die pack in there, and they get home, they open it up, boom, it blows up. That's what Trubisky is. Well, now I'm starting to think that's Ryan Pace too. We thought, oh, we had a we had a general manager that was going to be able to take us to the prize, and boom, it's you know, it's right, it blows up right in our face. It didn't didn't in my. Uh, I'm not sure, quite sure about this, but didn't Ted Phillips get a headhunting firm to go out yeah, and that, find? That, that, and they a found Ernie or Co- they got Ernie Arcozy to bring John Fox in. So they basically locked him in a closet and said, "Enough of that." Well, when you're brand new to the NFL, you just don't know who to hire. How long have they had the team? I hate to say it, they don't know what they don't know. Which is, a- I don't know. I, I I don't know anything about computers. You want me to buy you a computer? No, you don't want that. I'm just saying the Bears don't know who to hire. Dennis in Wisconsin. Go ahead, Dennis. Hey, Happy OB, how are you guys doing? All right, Denny. I, I got a question for you. You played for a couple of great coaches, Hallis and Ditka. They tried to develop, I believe, leaders on the team. Watching a Bear game, I don't see leaders on the field, or I don't see leaders that look like leaders on the sideline, which would help accountability. Who would you say are leaders on this team? I don't see any. Good question. Uh, you, you, you really want to know? Akeem Hicks, and he hasn't been a factor this year. Last year, he was a big part of what success we had. You, Cleo Max, great player, and you know, all that. He's getting paid a fortune. But Akeem Hicks is the heartbeat of this team. He's the true leader. We don't have anybody else. The only one that's gotten even close was Danny Trevathan, and now he's out. And then now Nick Kwiatkowski has played like a leader down the stretch, but it's not enough. you got to have a bunch. Well, you got to have a bunch of guys that lay it on the line, even when the games don't matter. Also, Dennis, when, you, when you, you're talking about a leader, he's got to be a pretty damn good football player, a guy that – Comes in there, isn't hurt all the time, doesn't have little owies, and he produces from week to week to week. And that way the fellow players can look up to him. Uh, defensively, we've got a couple people can do that. Offensively, we have nobody. Absolutely nobody. That's what I was thinking about. Who on the offensive side of the ball? Nobody you... on the offensive side would look up to anybody. There's nobody there. And that was a great, and that's a great call by Dennis. I mean, I, I, w- I would say that Allen Robinson is the lone guy who on some level has... has But he's not a guy that will call anybody out and and get in their face and say, hey, that's unacceptable. See, that's supposed to be technically the coach's job, but on the great teams like Tom Brady and all those guys like Teddy Bruschi on defense, those are what you want. You know, even the 06 team under, uh, 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 you know, Lovey, they had some guys that were pretty good leaders. No question. We don't have that now. We got 30 seconds here, gentlemen, so... We got one game to go. We'll see you next week. We're on from 7.30 to 9.30, so well after the game, we'll do our wrap-up special on the whole season. Look ahead, and we'll talk about whatever happened in the Vikings game. So Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas to both of you. Like I said, it's hard to get ready for Christmas after getting punched in the gut, but we'll do the best we can. Merry Christmas to all and a very healthy 20 to all. Thank you to Rick Geezer, our executive producer. Thank you for listening, texting, calling. We appreciate it. Hamp and OB on 720 WGN.